Bitstamps.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was originally not scheduled to attend the Paris Solidarity March and only announced he was going after Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman revealed he was going as well, not wanting to let a high-profile visit pass ahead of the March election. But Netanyahu was not a welcome guest, and French President Francois Hollande explicitly asked him not to come, concerned he would make the whole visit about Israel and the Palestinians. When Netanyahu insisted he was coming anyhow, Holland made a point to publicize his invitation to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. The Holland government was working on a UN resolution trying to kickstart peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, and Netanyahu has loudly opposed it. Predictably, Netanyahu and other Israeli officials visiting France today urged French Jews to leave the country for Israel, arguing France isn't safe. That's been a long-standing policy of the Israeli right, which believes it needs major Jewish immigration to sustain a majority and has regularly targeted France as the nation with the largest Jewish population in the world outside of Israel and the United States. With Holland desperate to portray himself as having the security situation in order, it's understandable that he would not want Netanyahu and others trying to drum up immigration. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday will take up a new religious rights case when it considers whether a town in Arizona discriminated against a local church by forcing it to remove signs notifying the public of its worship services. The nine justices are set to hear a one-hour argument in an appeal filed by the Good News Community Church, which objected to its treatment by the town officials of Gilbert, Arizona. The church says its free speech rights protected by the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment were violated. The court's last decision on a religious-themed issue came last June. The justices ruled 5-4 to four that owners of private companies can object on religious grounds to a provision of President Barack Obama's signature health care law that requires employers to provide insurance covering birth control for women. The Arizona case is not as contentious, with the town receiving little support and the Obama administration backing the church. The church's lead pastor, Clyde Reed, said the town's 2008 sign ordinance treated religious messages different than other types of signs. The ordinance has different categories based on content that determine the size of the sign, where it can be placed, and how long it can be displayed. The church signs were deemed to be event signs, which meant they received far worse treatment than other types, including those displaying political and ideological messages. The town's lawyer asked the Supreme Court not to hear the case, in part because of a new, less restrictive sign ordinance that was enacted in 2011. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Attorney General Eric Holder said on Sunday the investigation into former CIA director and retired General David Petraeus will be conducted fairly. The FBI and Department of Justice have recommended charges against Petraeus with leaking classified information to his former lover, biographer Pamela Broadwell. He allegedly gave her access to his CIA email account and other classified information during their affair. The details of the investigation were first reported by the New York Times. Some senators have voiced their support for Petraeus and have pushed back against calls for the disgraced director to be formally charged. Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, told CNN's State of the Union that Petraeus has suffered enough. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
Pennington is reeling this hour from one of the biggest stories we've seen in decades. That's right, Kathy. Mayor Sue Hallinan has stepped down following revelations of her involvement in a coupon forging scandal. After a week of fervent denials, Mayor Hallinan admitted that last Thursday she used five counterfeit coupons on a weekly shopping trip to the Kroger for a savings totaling $14.81. Once you've made a fake coupon and you've had a taste of that power, it's hard to stop. Mayor Hallinan also apologized for her first response to the controversy when she blamed Jared the Paperboy for stealing her coupons and replacing them with the fakes. I don't know what to say. She could have ruined my career. I hope she goes to jail forever. And in what many are saying is the ultimate indignity, Mayor Hallinan's photo has been put up on the Kroger's so-called banishment wall in between such undesirables as the Fredericks boy and infamous gum thief, Mr. Ivins. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything you'd like. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian. Daryl. And Mark. Mark's back from a uh, relatively lengthy uh, absence, uh, kind of a long vacation. You went down to Florida with the family and then uh, just recently got done with a cruise to Mexico. Mexico, Cozumel, and, and uh, Grand Cayman. Yep. Grand Cayman. I don't know where Grand Cayman is. Where is that in relation to, like, the Bahamas? It, um, it is farther west. Okay. So you have to go around Cuba, but basically it's like the first thing around Cuba huh, okay. to the west. And uh, so, I mean, we were just, just before the show asking you for uh, any stories or experiences you wanted to share. And you were just telling us that the Grand Cayman uh, place is not taxed. The Cayman Islands. Cayman yep. Islands. Yep. They have not no tax. tax. Uh, now, I, didn't, I haven't been able to dig into this as thoroughly as I'd like to, to be able to speak on, on it uh, like an economist. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is they, they say they have no taxes in Grand Cayman, and it's because the royal family's boat, back when boats had more problems, uh, the royal family's boat had some kind of problem out in the harbor, and the Caymanese uh, people swam out there to uh, save them, uh, save, the royal, save the folks in the boat, and uh, consequently it was the British royal family, and they felt delighted so they uh gave them tax dispensation now consider this is a clause how many years ago uh, more than a hundred easily amazingly they've continued to honor that agreement they've continued to honor the agreement and uh, why wouldn't they because up until because taxes relatively recently there wouldn't have been any particular reason there's not that many people on the island and um, only in the last couple of decades has it mattered now cayman's pretty wealthy but yeah. what do you do when you have like a, you know your your lazy brother um, come by and you you know he does something really great for you saves your life and you say you know what man you can stay here forever to, uh, without paying any rent mm. and he looks like he's never going to achieve anything but because he never has to pay rent finally he gets wealthy right yeah. <laughs> or people begin funneling money through him I'm not exactly sure how to describe this but well, you said they've got 500 like, banks yeah. on this tiny little clod of dirt and this is one of those places. Where I mean, that's their business, essentially. Their business is a bit of tourism, but mostly banking. It's fascinating. Uh, I you know, I don't know much about the that place. So if you buy property there, there's no property tax. It's almost unbelievable. It is almost unbelievable. I don't know what happens as far as they use terms fees and licenses, yeah, which uh, you know, immediately it's made a property me fee now. <laughs> no, I would be interested in learning more about that. If anybody's got experience with the Cayman Islands, feel free to dial us up toll free at 855 450 free. But I'm sure, Mark, you're glad to get back behind a microphone because you kind of miss that stuff when you get away from it, right? Hey, I like working and I feel weird. You know, I just I felt a, I could I breathed a little deeper when I walked onto my property and saw my trees. You, I like that. You couldn't even like get on the internet from this boat, correct? Or would or could you just have to pay like $15 a minute or something like that? Because I remember that's what it was like when I went on. It was 75 course. cents a minute. Um, I didn't pay for it. And it's fairly slow oh, on the boats. Yeah. So it's not even worth it. Well, they, it would essentially be satellite internet, as Correct. you can get. Um, you know, you can get that, but the thing when you attach to the side of the house or a pole or a tree is those things don't move much. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas on a boat, they move quite a bit. Yes. So, well, they have satellites that automatically compensate for the movement of the, of the boat. 
They do they dishes that do. I that. assume yeah. that it's uh, the dish. Yeah, right. the, the dish sits on a gyroscope. Right. right. But that has to be a pretty expensive piece of equipment, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you're going to expect equipment like that on a cruise ship, right? That's why it's 75 cents a minute. Yeah. Well, what I, didn't, actually what I didn't really good. don't understand about a cruise ship is this, this was, I, I can't remember what it was, but it's relatively inexpensive um, for, it was $600 per person or something like that. Cruises for cruise, are historically for f- inexpensive. Five days. Yeah. And I wouldn't think a resort would be much less than that per person. You're talking about $90 yeah. or something per person. Plus all the meals are included but in that 100 bucks, right? On a resort, you don't need the maintenance people that you do on a ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have your uh, depreciating asset rusting out from underneath you, which you do in a saltwater vessel. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. you've got this big, complicated... There's no captain at a uh, resort. There may be a cruise director, but uh, you know somebody under a different name there. But there's a bunch of staff that are reasonably well paid and a lot of it doesn't cost as much to build somebody a hut even if it's in many of these resorts they're not even air conditioned right like build them a hut put a bed in it with some nice linens and you're there uh, mm-hmm. boats expensive things to operate i don't understand why they're so cheap honestly yeah it's amazing and to the me. food just keeps coming i mean i don't know what they're paying their staff right obviously they're not they not don't much. have to pay minimum wage on on these boats right well they're not there is no minimum wage they are paying minimum wage by their standards which is to say that they don't have them right uh, this is a ship's registry panama uh this boat is out of panama and there's though, always this international crew right yeah. like they're from all over the world right. typically a lot of philippines uh, a lot of uh, ukraine a lot of croatia belarus you're not talking about somebody coming from say finland saying i want to work as a uh, steward in a on a boat because it wouldn't be worth it to them from the the standpoint of how much money they make so I pulled up some info on the Cayman Islands, yeah. and there is no property tax other than what is called a stamp duty. Okay, but I don't know it. what that necessarily is. It probably means that it's the seal the government puts on it when they sell or when you sell a piece of property. Okay, they hmm. they give it. Oh yes, indeed, this piece of paper is official. We have given you a government stamp, and that costs money, you know. So there you go. All right. So tell us more. If you know about it, you're welcome to join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. The Ross Ulbricht trial is set to kick off tomorrow morning. And our very own Derek J. Freeman, who is normally our co-host on Monday nights, is uh, probably already in New York City at this point. He left earlier today, probably around noon, taking a train down there. There's also other activists from New Hampshire, both in Keene and Manchester, who are carpooling down to Manhattan uh, to be in town for tomorrow morning's kickoff of this trial. There are going to be activists out in front of the courthouse uh, doing outreach, etc. So we're definitely going to keep you in the loop. I, I know our very own uh, former co-host, Michelle Seven, she's already in town. She's planning on attending the actual trial. Derek J is going to be doing things sort of outside of the courthouse. Uh, so we will hopefully be hearing from Michelle tomorrow night to kind of give us a recap of what happens on day number one of the Ross Ulbricht trial. Uh, I believe day number one is basically going to be jury selection. Okay. And they might start delving into the charges, but I'm not positive. We'll find out. It's, I expect it's going to be more what, more than a week's worth of a trial. It sounds uh, like it's I've heard be, that it could go up to six weeks. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be pretty detailed because, you know, it's a technical trial. As you may know, if you've been listening to the show, Ross Ulbricht is the man accused of running the Silk Road, which was the world's most infamous website for a long time. Uh, for a couple of years, they were the destination to purchase things like drugs. Uh, that you can't normally buy, uh, at least at a grocery store or something like that. You could buy any kind of illegal drug on the Silk Road, as well as some other stuff like fake IDs and things like that. They didn't allow guns. They didn't allow certain types of pornography. But otherwise, it was pretty much uh, you could buy and sell whatever you wanted. And so naturally, the FBI decided to make him public enemy number one, or at least that's the way it seemed. And they took... Ross Ulbricht down. Now, we don't know if he actually was the guy running the Silk Road. That's the point of the trial is to ostensibly try to prove that from the state's perspective. And it's just a terrible system uh, for deciding who's responsible for what. Um, the idea that you're going to take 12 people who are not experts in um, you know, law or, or technology tech in this case. or any of these things and then expect those 12 people to come up with the right answer, especially when you take them away from their families. You, in a lot of t- cases, you don't let them talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. You hold them up in places. You, I just want to get home to my family. I'll give you whatever answer you want. We've seen too many juries kind of look like that's what happened. Oh, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's hard to really get your hopes up about Ross's trial, but... 
nonetheless, the activists are heading down there and they're going to give it their best shot. So we'll keep you in the loop on that. There's actually uh, news that, Daryl, you want to share regarding the Silk Road. Or actually more of like an opinion piece about how this could affect the entire Internet, this yes. trial. So I want to hear about that. Plus, there's news about the new Silk Road. Not Silk Road 3.0. There's now another Silk Road uh, that's out there. And honestly, I don't even know what's going Silk on with Road, Silk Road 3.0. So we'll tell you more about that here in a moment. Uh, Alma is on the line with us in Tallahassee. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Alma. Hey, sweetie. I'm glad Mark's back. I love Mark, too. Thank Yay. you. Go All ahead, right. Alma. And I'm so glad you let me be your whipping post, you know, because my life is not boring. On a talk show that won't let me back on there anymore, I wonder why. But it's... The producer is my best Hold your thought, Alma. We're going to come back to you okay. here in a moment. You just got drowned out big time. Uh, we'll come back to you, and you can share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. You can join us via Skype. Your thoughts on the Ross Ulbricht trial or whatever it is you'd like to discuss. Coming up on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm gonna tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The latest on the Ross Ulbricht case coming up. That's about ready to kick off tomorrow morning. But the case could have wide-reaching implications, according to Daryl we will uh, get the story on how it could affect the entire internet. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Mark, were you able to bring your BuzzBox coffee along with you on the cruise? Um, I didn't have any reason to brew my own coffee on the cruise. I thought the coffee was pretty good, but it's just coffee that you get, uh, you know, out someplace. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not... It's not Great coffee, Buzzbox coffee is great coffee. I did take it with me on my trip ah, and had Florida. it at my in-laws' house. Okay. <laughs> had it this morning. I brewed it up, put it in my little to-go thing. Went to the airport. All oh, right on. So um, yeah, I mean it's it's awesome. Actually, I packed the coffee uh, back into the suitcase too, so I brought it back with me. Right, right. But uh, nonetheless, you can get some Buzzbox coffee, a free pound, by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox is shade grown. 100% organic and top 1% great Arabica beans. And what they do that's different, because you can get high-end coffee. If you really want to get high-end coffee, you can do that. You should drink shade-grown coffee. It's better for you um, from a health standpoint, better for the environment. But you can get that pretty much anywhere. What you can't get is an organization like BuzzBox that gives money back the way that they do. They give some of the proceeds back to us, and then we give it out through microloans through Kiva.org. So people around the world at this point have been benefiting from the fact that you're buying coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. You're going to drink coffee. If you're a coffee drinker, you're going to drink coffee. You might as well upgrade your coffee experience, enjoy your coffee more, and help people in the process. It's coffee.freetalklive.com to get a free pound and try it out. All right, toll-free numbers 855-453. We had Alma on the line, and she got drowned out by our music there. Uh, we couldn't hear you there, Alma. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. What did you want to share with us? All right. I'm glad you let me be your whipping post. You're a kind, very kind man. Oh, My I life is never boring. I wish it was. Into that. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, on a talk show today, he won't let me talk anymore on there, and it's producer. We've become very good friends. I talked to him about four or five times. Is this times your local talk show? show? Is this a local, yes. local talk show? Okay. Kind of all steady. Everybody so are, they, are they just tired of you calling in, or what's the what's the? He what's can't the battle with me. So you're he's you're outwitting him. You are. Yeah, he's afraid of me. Yeah. Well, all you know. Right. Today, talk show hosts today, are cowards. Hold hold on. Talk show hosts are cowards. I mean, they, for the most yeah. part, they don't want to talk to people. He's making a dollar bill and saying the same thing, repeating it. Well, I mean, that's not unusual. I mean, it's generally the case that talk show hosts have their stick and they kind of stick with that. And You're boring. That's what they do. But, you know... Kill, it, kill, kill. That's his motto. Sure. Well, I mean, that's what works on talk radio, unfortunately. At yeah. least that's what's worked not thus far. Not with me, it don't. But today he was talking about the mus- mus- how you say mascot to Florida State, which need not to say I hate sports. It will not come in my house. But, you know, he passed him, Osalil, or whatever you call his freaking name. But he lives right up the road from me, where I live. And he said he must be from New Jersey. And he was spray-painted. And he said, I called and I told Dayton is the name. He has his own show Mm -hmm. on Saturdays. I love this man. You love him, but he he won't let you on his show? Uh Uh-uh. I said, he ain't no Yankee. And I, I... Emailed him and emailed him. Who? Hold on a and second. I'm a little lost. Who's him? not the Yankee? The mascot Chief for Osceola, Florida State? the mascot for That's Florida right. State he University. Ain't no Yankee lives right the road from me. Is that he an was Indian? Born in Tallahassee. Yes. And he was raised. His mama lives in Panama City, where this show comes from. 
and he lives right up the road from me. And Hold I on, live- I'm getting a little confused here, Alma. Who lives up the road? Go Chief Osceola or yes. the talk show host? Okay, this is throwing me off Chief a little bit Os- because Chief- to me, Chief Osceola was killed by a bunch of duplicitous <laughs> white people yeah, in the 18th different- century. Okay, this is so. A different- Florida this State University's game. mascot is the Seminoles. That's correct. They yeah. have someone that dresses up as Chief Osceola. Was Osceola right a Seminole? Uh, allegedly. Right okay. Uh, and my... he will dress up as Chief Osceola yeah, and... for the football games. Yes. Right. Rides and into the stadium on a horse with a flaming spear, and then he spikes it into the 50-yard line. I've seen that, yeah. Before the game. Okay. So the person that is dressed up as Chief Osceola. The actor it, lives down the road It's from an actor, Alma. but, you know, when uh, he's, you know, the mascot, he is Chief Osceola. All right. So what's right. what? where are you going with all this, Alma? What's the point? All right. Here we go again. He called him. He must be from New Jersey, a Yankee, and spray painted. No, he's dark complected. He lives right here in Georgia. So you're saying he this guy is born- legitimate, uh, legitimately not a Yankee, and that is the no. co- that is the controversy on the radio is as to whether and he or not won't let me he won't let me straighten it out. Yeah, I well, told him. I you know, said, I'm that, like I said, they're they're ta- the talk show hosts. I mean, Dayton, I've talked to Dayton before. He's one of the local hosts there. Oh, in hey, wonderful Tallahassee. Thank you, Alma, for your call tonight. Yeah, I've talked to Dayton. He's a nice guy. Actually, had me on his show, as a matter of fact, on on weekends. And I guess that's all it takes. What? To be a nice guy. Had to be on the show. Go ahead. All you have to do is just invite me. I'll pretty much come on your show. Anyway, um, you know, but generally, if you challenge a talk show host, they're not really that interested in talking to you. I mean, typically, if whatever it is you say, I mean, this seems like a piddly issue, but, you know, whatever the issue is. If I got called a Yankee, it would not be a piddly issue. Daryl? Yeah, I'm not a Yankee. Yeah. The, Screw everybody who says I'm a Yankee. The talk Go ahead. show hosts uh, who, you know, who has an opinion, usually they don't want that challenged. Frequently, a talk show host will have their call screener screen out anybody that's calling about something they don't like talking about. Uh, you know, whatever their touchy issue is, they will take you out of the loop. You are not going to be allowed to call the show. And that's just how it is. That's just talk radio. And that's one of the things that makes Free Talk Live different is that we will take calls from pretty much anybody about anything. Like Joe in Raleigh, North Carolina, listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Joe. Hey there. Um, you, you may remember me. I actually called in a couple of weeks ago, um, and I'm the guy that proposed that we have virtual Congress and Senate um, where, we, where, where the senators actually – stay in their home district, uh, U.S. senators and the congressmen, and actually they we shut down Washington. But I actually have a different hmm. subject altogether today. I was uh, researching some of what, what I was suggesting that might be a good idea, and I ran across a guy that is absolutely fascinating, a gentleman named Philip K. Howard, and he has a website called The Common Good. And... The big thing that he is about is he says that the only way we will fix government is to start over. He says that we have layered law on top of law. We never do away with the law. Eighty percent of the budget, of the federal budget, is in law. So there's only 20 percent that is discretionary. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Uh, actually, when it comes to the military budget, uh, a great deal of that's discretionary, but I, you're not going to get rid of it. Um, I mean, the. Right, correct. I understand. But let, let me tell you the most fascinating thing he talks about is he makes reference to how complex law has become. And he references the Interstate Highway Bill, which was a bill that, or a law that came out of the Eisenhower administration. In the middle, in the mid 50s, the law was introduced. It was 65 pages, passed within 60 days, from start to finish. And 15 years later, we have the interstate highway system in place. Stand by, Joe. I'm not sure where you're going with this. We'll come back to you. It's Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure Ancient Defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, the latest on the Silk Road as the Ross Ulbricht trial looms going to be kicking uh, that off tomorrow morning in Manhattan. Liberty activists are arriving in New York City today and tonight to gear up. They've got signs, they've got a plan, and it's going to be very interesting tomorrow. Hopefully no one will get arrested, uh, but I imagine the federal cops that will be outside the f- and inside the facility will not appreciate the presence of liberty-minded activists, many of whom are of the mindset that the jury nullification idea should get to this jury. Right. And so. it, the way these activists are disorganizing is very interesting. And I, I use the term disorganizing intentionally 
because there are several different groups doing several different things. I don't know if we uh, we could talk about that yet, but hold that thought because I do want to get into what's going to happen tomorrow, and uh, and we'll continue with your calls as well. In fact, that's where we left off with with Joe in Raleigh. Joe, you were talking to us about the somebody named Philip Powers, I think, who was right, right, right. And I, I'll get I'll get directly to the point. He he references that the law that is the current interstate highway system took 15 years to implement and pass that Senate and the Congress in 60 days in the 50s. If you tried to pass the same law today, and the interstate highway system didn't exist, the environmental study to implement the law would take 150 years. <laughs> so his point is that we have, as a country, we have done nothing to eliminate law. All we do sure. is we add on to a well, law. I don't like and using the term we here because I don't make laws and I'm not interested in well, making I mean, laws. But you if you're talking about the government, about. you're talking about this, the people Correct. in the federal government. Yeah, I mean, it's law stacked on top of law, as you were saying before. And then as uh, as you know, new president or new Congress or whatever comes in, they don't take any time to repeal laws. They just add more to. And, of course, nobody ever has the time to read any of these things, let alone right. the congressman who actually passed right. the laws. The this, making of laws makes money. The yeah. dissolution oh, yes. of law yes. makes no money. Joe, uh, anything else you want to share tonight? Well, one, one, one quick thing. His solution is that we have a sunset law, one more law, that any law with budgetary implications has a, has a 10-year lifespan. And, it, and the Congress and the Senate are forced to review that law after a decade. And that's, that's a great yeah, idea, but they'll great, never do it, right? Like I, the, I like the idea, but there's an organization uh, that used to be called Downsize DC. Yep. And, Downsize DC still, still exists. Yep. DownsizeDC.org, where they suggest that the lawmakers, and this is really easy, they suggest the lawmakers be required to read the laws that they sign. And if they um, they either sign an affidavit that says that they re read it or it's read out loud in, uh, in Congress. Mm -hmm. Seven days before the vote. They can't get this passed. No. They can't, they can't make these wow. stinking, lying thieves read their own GD laws because that's how corrupt they are. They won't yeah. read the laws wow. because they'll never have to follow them. Right. You will. They'll get whatever they want. And you can come up with the best plan in the world to reform the federal government, but those guys aren't going to change the government the way you want it or the way this Philip guy wants it or the way anybody wants it except for their cronies and their buddies. All the good ideas in the world are worthless without somebody who's willing to say, I'm just not going to do what they say anymore. Joe, thanks for your call tonight. I do appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Aaron. He's in Augusta, Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Um, I'm calling about a previous video, y'all, or that I saw. A previous what? That, uh, video? Called Killing, Killing Mailman. It was on YouTube. Okay. Um, um, in this video, you stated or your show stated that mailmen were paid by tax dollars. I'd like to know where you got that number of those facts. Well, mailmen, uh, as I understand it, you're talking about the U.S. Postal Service. The uh, yeah. Postal Service, they are semi-private in that they operate based on the stuff that they sell, the you know the products and the shipping services and all of that. But their pensions, I believe, are still paid for by U.S. taxpayers. That would be incorrect. Okay. What I'm part is incorrect? I'm a mailman. Um, the, first off, in 1971, Nixon passed the Postal Reorganization Act, which made the post office a semi-private organization mm -hmm. and got rid of the tax funding for it, except in three instances, which are presidential and congressional mail. They mail everything they want to for free. Yep. Um, mail for the deaf and blind and mail for military overseas. That's the only tax money the post office receives. What well, about they all these bailouts they've been fire. getting? Yeah, and, and don't forget the the low uh, tax, the low uh, rent that they get for many of their post offices because they're on government land, like one dollar a year and that sort of thing. Yeah, but that that's pretty much all federal government buildings pay no rent, basically. I, I'm just um, saying that that if I were to start up a post office, um, you know, in uh, an organization that delivers mail, um, mm -hmm. competing with the United States Post Office, like, you would not be allowed to because they have a monopoly on. 
the delivery of first-class mail. And let's say that they get rid of that law, the, the law that the federal government gives a monopoly to an organization, which is you know known for its bureaucracy and inefficiency, but they give them this monopoly And anyway. billion-dollar deficits and every they, year. You know, why they put Lysander Spooner out of business in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. But um, if I did come, you know, try to compete, I would essentially be competing it against an organization that's getting subsidies um, in order to operate. Now, I didn't, I did, you, just, you didn't hear my voice because I wouldn't claim a mailman is paid uh, by government funds, but he is certainly subsidized by government funds. His paycheck would be different if his organization had to pay rent. I agree with that, and I, I, while being a postal worker, completely support the private, private privatization of the the post office. I, I don't think any government, I don't think the government should be involved in anybody's private business. Now, hasn't the post office gone to the federal trough, gone to Congress, and you know basically said, "Woe is us! We are failing miserably. We've got billions of dollars we're losing." Didn't they get a bailout of some sort, or am I misremembering that? You are misremembering that. What? happened in 2006, they, Congress passed a law requiring the Postal Service to pay its pensions 80 years in advance. Right. 80 years. They're paying for the pensions of people not even born yet. Mm -hmm. And the Postal Service probably will be dead at that point anyway. Right. And nobody, so the Postal Service they're not hiring anybody the paid. same way either, right? Hold up. Before you go on, nobody's getting real, very few people are getting hired as postal workers. Most of them are sort of contractors that don't get the same pensions. Uh, that's a misconception. Okay. There, there's two levels to the employment. Right. And while there are a great deal of contractors, that's mostly in cities. Okay. Um, like the thing Where I am, it's that, contractors. That Where are you at? Up rural New Hampshire. Are you sure it's contractors, or are you looking at RCAs, which is the position I hold? I don't know what an RCA is. It's a rural carrier associate. We're part-time workers for the Postal Service. That We're kind basically of thing. substitute teachers for mail. Do you get workers. a pension for that? Nope. See, that's what I'm thinking is, is that it's any, any government agency at this point is facing such terrible budgetary restrictions that they can't be hiring pensioned workers um, much anymore. I mean, it's just a, it's difficult to do. Aaron, thanks for calling to clear that up. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We actually I like it when people call in to clarify things that have been said on there because a lot of times in live radio, you get whipping along and yeah. you might say something that could be, um, you know, misconstrued. Let's talk to a different Aaron. This one is calling on Skype. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. We have Aaron on Skype. Aaron going once. Aaron going twice. You know what? Sometimes my sound card has problems, so it could be my fault. We'll see if we can bring Aaron on here in a moment after we clear up whatever technical difficulties might be present. Uh, so Ross Ulbricht's trial kicks off tomorrow morning. It's going to be, I think, what I predict to be a lengthy trial. Daryl, you said up to six weeks. That's what I heard from one of the people that's heading down. They, I don't know how many witnesses the state is going to be calling, but a lot of these witnesses are going to be technical witnesses, I would imagine, trying to explain yes. in layman's terms to a jury things like TOR, the anonymizing system for the <laughs> Internet. Uh, so it could be a very educational trial in a lot of ways if you can stand to sit through it. Um, and I believe our very own Michelle Seven will be doing that. So hopefully we'll be hearing from her tomorrow. But we've got news about uh, what's going on with the Silk Road. Silk Road 1.0 is long gone. But what about the new Silk Road? There's now a fourth Silk Road. We'll tell you about that because there had been Silk Road 2.0 and then 3. And now there's one. But it's not called Silk Road 4.0. We'll tell you more about it here in a moment. 855-450 free. You can take control. This is Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. The U.S. Constitution protects our freedoms through a system that separates and confines government power. America's founding fathers were wary of government and tried to use the Constitution to limit its reach in many ways. They divided the government into three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial, each able to limit the actions of the others. While this system can lead to what some people call gridlock, our founders considered it the best system for preventing politicians from violating our most fundamental rights. They also separated the national government from state governments, leaving most power at the local level. Our founders added a Bill of Rights that further limits the power of government. The Constitution doesn't create efficient government. It was created to protect us from government overreach. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. 
If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story. Story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free. Take control at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the latest on the Silk Road, the underground black marketplace also, I've had in my prep for a few days the continuing crazy situation in Venezuela. It's been a while since we've talked about Venezuela on Free Talk Live, so I would like to get to that. But, of course, you can call in about anything you'd like. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. Daryl. And Mark. Don't forget to check out more of Daryl on his websites. He's got fpp.cc and also fppradio.com. Yes. Uh, FPPradio.com, Daryl, features you in audio form seven days per week. Yes, seven days a week in a five-minute newscast. Three days a week, there's a 30-minute show that I do, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. And one of the features that I do is every Wednesday I have an Ask Me Anything. So if any of the listeners have questions for me, they can send that in an email to ama at fppradio.com. I will answer those questions on Wednesdays. So check it out, fppradio.com. And if you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. They encrypt your online data. Whatever it is that's going out from your computer and coming into your computer, it's encrypted before it reaches your internet service provider so your ISP doesn't know what you're doing as soon as you start using ProXPN. Right now, if you're not using ProXPN, your ISP is probably logging all the websites you visit. 
and the search terms that you enter. So they may be keeping those logs up to five years. You can put a stop to that by going and downloading Pro XPN's free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Plus, Linux users, you can also get Pro XPN working, and it's fairly simple to do that. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 and you'll save 50% off their premium account. The premium account gives you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites with ProXPN's premium account, all for just about 5 bucks a month using code FTL50 when you go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's code FTL50. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Plus, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, the latest on the Silk Road coming up first, Pete is on the line in California. Pete, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, well, first off, uh, before I start with the Bitcoin stuff, I want to I want to give glory to Jesus Christ. I want to thank him for all the wonderful blessings he's bestowed on me, and I want to thank the Lord for uh, all the uh, charity he's given me and all the ability he's given me to do charity to people and help and show love to people and show love by what I do. I Pete, thank him for making I can me appreciate liberty-minded. That, but I, I have some questions thank- when people do this, because this is common, right? Like, as there have been gods for as long as there have been people, and people give God the credit for when good things happen. Does Jesus make bad things happen to you? Well, Jesus allowed certain things to happen, but ultimately they were to my benefit. I didn't see it at the time, and it hurt, but uh, it was because he loves me, he allowed chastisement to happen, and he used it to clean me up. There are certain things that have happened in my life that uh, they, they hurt, but... If they didn't happen, then I would probably have worse things happening. What about people that have, are like, you know, sort of terrible accidents, lose the use of their legs and things like that? What do you, a how, lot of that, how do you see that? Well, God's allowed that to happen, but you know what? There might have been, that might have been somebody's family member there. That person might not have uh, uh, believed in Jesus otherwise, and he sees that, and there's something that happens, and it opens his eyes to maybe there is life after death, maybe, and it saves somebody's soul. Same thing with a baby dying or something horrible. Uh, you know, I don't I don't much agree with God. Pete uh, when he calls into the show, but I, I do like the viewpoint that even things that happen that appear to be negative that looked at in the right perspective can actually be a, you know, a, a, an experience from which you grow. And I can go from. for it. I guess what bothers me the most is when I see professional athletes uh, thanking God and like the end zone or something <laughs> like that, as though God hates Cincinnati, but really mm. likes Baltimore. I mean, that kind of that thing I've always uh, found I thought that weird. that was just universal knowledge. <laughs> You know what else I find hilarious? Like hmm. in the mainstream industry for music and athletics, these guys that have their mason ring on one finger, they're like, oh, I'm going to thank God for my Grammy Award or my, my winning the Super Bowl in their mason. What's their that have to do with anything? Devil. Masons uh, have to be religious. That's a damnable lie. They're of the devil. I have a Scottish Rite temple like a few blocks from my oh, house. Oh, what so do I you know right about across- it? There's a temple. I live, I live right across the street from the frat house. That's another one that's hilarious. I try to you, tell those What do you guys think, that, Pete? That uh, you think? Why do you think Masons are of the devil? What makes you think that? Why? Because look, okay, they're like, oh, well, it's just a club, you know. Oh, we're just, you know. But I, I researched Albert Pike's book and the thing about the right of York and the right of Scotland. And don't tell me that it's just a club, and oh, they're, you know, they they don't know what they're doing and all those things. I don't know what they're the doing. 30, it's a 30. secret club, so I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I don't know anything about it, and I don't see how you would know, know anything about it. About it. Well, here, here's the reality, okay? You know, I know the, Masons, the and they seem like good guys. Well, let me tell you. There's people that are in the confessed church, if you will, the, the supposed church, that their actions don't line up. You'll what know church? them by their actions or their fruit. What church you know, are you I'm talking, talking about? about Christianity and, I'm talking about Christianity, the religious right. Yeah, you know, but, the well, the actions of these actions. Masons are honorable. I mean, uh, Jason Osborne, I, be, I believe, one of the longtime sponsors of Free Talk Live is, uh, from what I understand, a Mason. Uh, the guy who gave you a ride back from the airport today, Mark Edge, that was a Mason, from what I understand. And, uh, you know, he's not a bad guy, right? I mean, he didn't try to kill me out on the side of the road, if yeah. that's what you're asking me. But I've got to say, okay, when it comes that's... to the fruit of the Spirit, I think the fruit of the Spirit is one of the things I like the most about the Bible. And it's got to be wow. one of the most indicting wow. things about modern Christianity. When you talk about modern Christians and uh, the fruit of the Spirit, you talk about love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Can't say that. I don't. I didn't have to didn't memorize crap at Christian school. Um, when you're talking <laughs> about these fruits of the I've Spirit. I've never heard of this. These are the fruits of the Spirit. You will know a Christian, according to Jesus, you mm-hmm. will know Christians according to their fruit. 
Right. Right? And it's love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, yeah. faithfulness, self-control, um, these kind of things. Do you find that the Christians that you've met in your life tend to be better at those things than the average individual? Certainly not Pete, although I've never met him. Just, you know, having him call. Thank you, Pete, for the call tonight. Uh, having Pete call incessantly over the last few months, uh, he sounded like he cared about love tonight, but that's because we didn't, you know, he didn't get into his part where he starts hating on gay people. Among other things, what is he? What else does Pete hate? I forget. He's got other hate besides clearly people, Masons. But, yeah, um, the Masons, right? So like to, to but him, he doesn't hate shellfish. Well, to him, he calls this tough love or whatever that you know it's that God didn't like gays is what he says, and so therefore it's okay. So he's got a lot of justifications for his hatred, but uh, I don't hear a whole lot of love coming from Pete generally. So, but I'm not going to make a general statement about all Christians because I'm a just lot a, of them, I, I a lot of you, them you don't I know I did not Christians. ask you for a general statement about okay. Christians. I didn't ask you to say, hey, are Christians a bunch of hate-filled uh, jerks that support wars ac- around the world? Oh yeah, Pete supports war too. I'm just right. about ready to make that statement, but I'm going to go ahead and I, I asked you did you notice that the Christians that you've met in your life somehow are more kind, gentle, faithful, uh, have the more self-control? No. And the answer to me, that I, uh, the answer for me is no, they're really not. And yeah. that has led me to the conclusion. Um, like I've talked to uh, Daryl here quite a bit and read some books, and I've come to the conclusion. He's, he's I don't not a use that term. Of, that's true. He's not a Christian. He believes that uh, Yahweh is his personal, uh, excuse me, Yahshua is his personal savior, and that's different, different in his mind. But I've come to the conclusion that modern Christianity, as it exists, is in fact the Satanism that is referred to in Revelations. Mm. That most people calling themselves Christians are Satanists. They're like oh boy. Pharisees. I, like, I'm sick of them. I, the, dropping the, the bomb. He's back from vacation. I, He's dropping the bomb here. Got no use live. for that stuff. Well, the, uh, the average Christian who's listening to me says, yes, that's what they're like. Those Christians out there, they're like, they're like that. You think they the average agree, Christian yes, thinks other Christians are Satanists? They agree completely with me because this does not sound like an indicting statement against somebody individually. Uh-huh. So, um, you I, think the average Christian is that much of a – they're more that willing to indict fellow Christians sure. as Satanists? The, they, they, have, they look at the other denominations. The other denominations have it wrong. Specifically, yeah, the Baptist West. will say that Methodists are wrong. Pentecostals are wrong. But does that mean they believe they're Satanists? Not that they're Satanists. But they do believe Catholics are. But, yeah, like, you know, they don't believe the right way. They don't mm-hmm. practice the right way. They're not getting into my heaven. Okay. A lot of them really will say things Satanist, like that. Though. Like, why, well, I mean, that seems kind of inflammatory, Mark. Why would you say that they're Satanists? I mean, they would deny that, right? Like, they don't worship Satan. Well, um, okay, so Satan's the deceiver. Mm-hmm. And if you believe in a religion that is something different than what your savior uh, talked about, like the red letters, uh, you know, for instance, the beatitude, meek, meekness, kindness, um, you know, all these things. When you when you believe in something contrary to that, like this is a Christian nation, and we should bomb uh, the bad folks into the Stone Age and those kind of uh, statements. When you believe stuff like that, you are believing things that are not of your savior so therefore are of the deceiver mm. if you are deceived you are a product of a sa- of, of satanism as I think it's I'm a concerned. strong argument and, I mean, and I... then also the term antichrist does not mean the opposite of christ mm-hmm. it means a false christ we will come back with more here the toll free number is 855 450 free i i think I you're right i mean no I, calls on this i None. i think you're absolutely right mark i'm i'm on board with you on this 855 450 free. You can take control of the airwaves. Not that I believe in Satan, but you know, from their perspective, it makes sense. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write... 
worms in the transaction comments and I'll send you something weird. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,211, silver at $16.44, and Bitcoin is trading around $297.96. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, Redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Thursday, a bill to approve the construction of the Keystone XL oil pipeline passed another barrier in the Senate. The Senate Energy Committee approved the measure with a 13-9 vote. The bill will go before the full Senate next week, while the House of Representatives is scheduled to vote on Friday. A federal judge in California has overturned a ban on the sale of controversial foie gras, duck or goose liver, which has been fattened through force feeding. Foie gras involves deliberately fattening the animals by force feeding corn through a feeding tube. U.S. District Judge Stephen V. Wilson permanently blocked the state attorney general from enforcing a law which banned the practice. Judge Wilson made his decision based on the argument that the federal government's authority trumps the states. Activists from across the political spectrum are organizing a global day of action against the use of torture on January 31st. In response to a lack of media coverage and action from politicians following the release of the Senate report on CIA torture, a number of organizations are calling for rallies and protests across the globe to stand in solidarity with victims of torture. The anti-media, the Conscious Resistance Network, the Solutions Institute, and a growing list of activist groups and media outlets are joining the calls for action. Several cities are planning on hosting mock waterboarding and force feeding presentations. Today's broadcast of Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The accused operator of the Deep Web Silk Road Marketplace is set to go to trial. Catherine Bleich has this Liberty Beat special report. Many of you know that in late 2013, the online Bitcoin black market known as the Silk Road was shut down. The alleged founder, Ross Ulbricht, was arrested and charged with conspiracy to traffic drugs, launder money, and even murder for hire in the state of Maryland. This month, he will go on trial for many of these charges in the state of New York. The Liberty Beat is pleased to announce that we will be there to report live from the courtroom the entire first week. With a generous donation 
Bitcoin from Roger Ver, also known as the Bitcoin Jesus, the Liberty Beats' Derek Bros is one of several activists who have been funded to travel to New York to serve as our eyes and ears. We hope to also send the Liberty Beats founder and editor-in-chief, John Bush. The two plan to work in tandem as they live blog the courtroom actions, write narrative pieces, interview key people, and create audio media. Help us send our amazing team into the belly of the beast to document this historic trial by visiting the Liberty Beat dot com backslash support. You can expect the mainstream media to only paint a small part of the picture. Let the Liberty Beat bring you the truth. To learn more about Ross and his case, visit freeross.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit LibertyBeat.com backslash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. A spokeswoman gives birth to a spokeschild. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Tacoma spokeswoman Tammy Barker became the proud mother of a bouncing baby spokeschild last night. According to spokespeople, Barker, a spokeswoman for a Tacoma-based pharmaceutical firm, the birthing process was a major success. Peter Wahlberg, spokesman for Tammy's husband Phil, had this to say. At 9.17 p.m. last night, an eight-and-a-half-month-old spokes fetus was delivered alive and through the miracle of birth became a seven-pound, six-ounce spokes child. Spokes father and spokes mother are doing fine. Spokeswoman Barker is expected to be released from St. Robert's Hospital tomorrow. The spokes child will remain in the hospital's media care unit for several weeks of training. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want right here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype into the show here at username lrn.fm. With you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Daryl. And Mark. And coming up, the latest on the Silk Road. The trial of Ross Ulbricht is expected to start tomorrow morning. Activists are already in Manhattan gearing up for... What it will be a bright and early trial in Manhattan tomorrow at the district court, the federal district court, where Ross Ulbricht will be facing the rest of his life in prison pretty much for operating a website. And we will tell you more about that as we get the chance. Your calls come first here as we go uh, back to the phones. In this case, we go to Skype where Stephen is on the line in Texas. Stephen, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl and Mark. Hey, thanks. Um, Hi, so I just wanted to inform your previous caller that generally there's uh, primarily one kind of qualification in order to become a Mason, which is that generally you need to believe in God. That's right. Whatever form that is, uh, you, whether you can be a Christian, uh, an pantheist, um, generally sometimes an agnostic, you can kind of bleed through into there. Um, and so in no way are, are you kind of uh, anti-Christian. That, that, that viewpoint really isn't... Uh, kind of like accepted or established in that moment because it doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight or a Republican or a libertarian or um, a Buddhist or, or, or a Muslim. Uh, it's generally a place of uh, harmony and, and brotherhood, which I think for a fraternity that's been along for a long time. And if you take a concept like this and flash back a few hundred years, that's pretty revolutionary thinking. And so, I don't know, I just thought um, I kind of kind of well, I Stephen, the, so, I mean, you're talking yeah. as though you know a thing or two. Are you a Mason? Yeah, no, I'm a 32nd degree Mason. Are you allowed to Texas. say that? They're not going to come out and kill you for that, right? Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> well, there is some sort of sw- uh, sworn secrecy oath, isn't there? Like, you can't talk about certain You can't stuff? talk about the handshake or something. Well, uh, so, 
I mean, have ever have you, have you guys ever been in like a college fraternity? Maybe no, no. no. I know that I there's went to secrets, community college. I know there's uh, secret societies out there, and I understand that uh, you know just the very fact that you say that you're a secret society is going to drive a certain amount of people bat s insane. Well, it's not a secret if you're saying uh, it's a secret, right? Like it's no longer a secret. I don't I think. See, like, yeah, masonry isn't a secret society no. at all. It's no, that would be like the Illuminati. That that the Illuminati would be a secret society <laughs> if they exist. Well, th- there's the claim that Masons are a secret society because a lot of the things that happen within the organization are secrets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sure. therefore, it's, secrets. it's a society with secrets, Fair enough. ergo secret society. Okay. I don't know if I would call it a secret society because in order for it to be a secret society, you probably wouldn't know about it. Right? Uh, okay, because so it's worth the, the distinction we've made. It's yeah. not worth spending a lot of time on that But tell me this. Okay, so, so the 32nd degree, is that the highest ranking? 33rd's the highest. From my understanding, uh, 33rd is the highest. Correct. Okay. And that's kind of like an honorary, like you've put in perhaps like 40 plus years of service and then you uh, kind of have like an honorary, like, thank you. How, how old are you? You don't sound particularly old, but sometimes No, it's I'm hard 27 years old. So you can get to the 32nd level of masonry by age 27. When did you start as a mason? Is it Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, no, I actually uh, became a Mason two years ago. Whoa. So that's three. Yeah, yeah. So that's from degree one to 32 within two years. But okay. do you make it memorize yeah, like how do chants you, or something? I mean, does do you jump Do you jump up like, can, can you jump up blocks? Can you go from like third to 30? Like, <laughs> in, in one do, do you have to like, you know, break boards to be able to like, you know, go <laughs> up that fast? So basically you have um, kind of like your first three degrees or when you learn about like the philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, in the, in, in the United States at least, it's different in other areas of the world. Unfortunately, in the United States, most of the time you go through degrees four through 32 and essentially, you know, a weekend. It's wow. kind of like a festival. Of a, yeah. So um, there's no kind of like very long indoctrination process of huh. becoming like a Satanist or uh, what it seemed like your your last caller was suggesting that. And and, and from my experience, and, and you know, as, as uh, you, you said, I'm 27 years old. I've only been in the fraternity for two years. I, you know, when after I uh, got out of grad school, um, I kind of wanted to have a fraternal like experience like I had in college, but, you know, of more of an adult nature without the beer bongs and, and stuff like that. Well, and, well, wait a second. Like, There's no beer bongs? Well, that's what I was going to ask next was, you know, I'm out. what is the average? Obviously, I don't know. What, obviously, there's stuff you can't tell us, but what can you tell us about your typical Masonic lodge, your meetings? You know, what what transpires? I mean, you know, they sort of promote themselves as, their, as almost like a charitable group, but what do you guys do? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would summarize ourselves as twofold. One, um, like a service fraternity, which um, like the Lions you know, Club. So, yeah, sure. Uh huh. And, and then two, uh, kind of um, just exposing members to a, a philosophy that's not really religious. It's kind of like uh, generally here's a, 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 a way to live and, and and in harmony with with mankind. So it's like an, it's kind of an esoteric uh, philosophy. Would you say there are some esoteric parts of it which which and, and and many of that stuff is on the internet and so when people read that i, I guess it, it could be easy to kind of like make it synonymous with a religion or something so I, i've stuff. heard i've heard that there's one of the initiations is that masons have to simulate human sacrifice what can you <laughs> either confirm or deny this i can absolutely deny that I have never done anything like that from the first to the 32nd degree. Well, wait a second now. Um, I mean, when you're talking about simulating human sacrifice, Christians do this in some cases every single week, right? Like there's the, the, the blood, and the, body the blood and the body of Christ and that sort of thing. So in, what in, does that mean in the form of a ritual, this could not be – could be something so – uh, far removed from human sacrifice so as not to look much like it. Like, I think this is grape juice and a cracker, but really it's human sacrifice or vice versa. Well, it, it depends on which sort of sex of Christianity you ask about the communion. Sure. Because there are some, such as the Roman Catholics, that will tell you that the Trains. grape juice and the cracker actually is 
blood and skin. Cr- cr- transtabulation? Uh, something. I yeah. don't know. I'm not a Catholic. It I don't turns, know the phrase. Right. It's magic. But then, Priest magic that turns crackers and grape juice into you know, blood and, like, and bodies. Methodist yeah. and Baptist will tell you that the cracker and grape juice symbolize the blood and the flesh. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. So one other thing about Masons, besides you have to believe in a god, you also have to be a man, do you not? Like there's a separate yep. club for women, but they're not allowed into the Masons specifically. It's called a fraternity for a reason. Yeah, th- that's accurate. There, there are some kind of groups um, that do exist that are kind of like uh, clandestine Masonic organizations who have access to kind of like the philosophy um, and who operate that have women, um, you know, it, it, it and, and, and that's fine. So but, tell uh, me then the order of yeah. the Eastern star. Now this is one of the, this is one of those things that's going to make the conspiracy theorists go off their rocker. I mean, they okay. did choose the pentagram, the inverted pentagram for uh, their symbol. And this is the order of the Eastern star is essentially the Masonic club for women. And uh, that's generally what it is, as I understand it. And they, it's pretty clearly a pentagram, right? So, like, you know, yeah. is that just one of those things where they picked it and they didn't ah, realize? Ah, no biggie. Or, you who, know, was... who, who would have <laughs> think that this is a problem? Yeah, how'd that happen? You know, unfortunately, I'm not a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. Hmm. I can say for sure that there are no kind of, like, pentagrams in masonry. Hmm. Um, I don't really know what they, the, the ladies do. In the do you guys get together star. for group sex? <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a eyes wide shut type orgy scenario. I, I look. I, I don't want to know about your movie consumption. I'm asking about other. Th- <laughs> uh, the answer is no. Okay. No. So it doesn't sound yeah, like a, a freaking weird movie that was. I haven't seen Never it. Never saw it. Uh, don't. It, well, uh, I'm a okay. Huge Stanley Cooper fan. So yeah. Smoke a lot of pot and watch it. Maybe. S- so <laughs> people who are interested. So what you would say is that people who are interested in service oriented community club of some sort men who believe in God of some sort, are the ones who can be a Mason. Now, to be a yep. Mason, do you have to know a Mason? How do you, like, nope. seek it out? Yeah, it's like being a vampire, I think. <laughs> it's, no, no. So, yeah, yeah just, um, well, what I did, actually, is uh, I just went, you know, went into Google, looked for lodges in Houston, which is where mm-hmm. I live in Texas, um, and w- went over to the lodge when they had a meeting and said, hey, my name's Steven. Uh, I want to learn more about you. And That's how I joined the fire department. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good story, Steven. Thanks for clearing some of that up for us. Appreciate hearing no from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 
Free Talk Live. Why would they go around bombing people around the world? Doesn't that make us less safe? Oh, you know what? I guess some of these people got it coming. It's a good day to be dead if you're in a terrorist search. How many of the people that the U.S. military has killed in the last decade have been terrorists? A whole bunch of them. You know what? What percentage? You like some liberal church. What percentage? A lot of people I'm not a liberal, sir. Coming. Liberals you support know, war, from what I can tell. Take a look. Obama looked at war when we need it. We have justifiable we need war. war. <laughs> people like you. <laughs> you for good men do nothing, you jerk. Wait, wait, wait a second. Shut up, jerk. I'm not bombing hard. anyone. You can feel however you feel about me, but Smedley Butler, the two-time Medal of Honor winning Marine, felt the same way. Well, you know what? Because they're headed the right way. You know what? We should have went after China. We should have chased those tricons across that river. We should have bombed them. Uh, we should have nuked them. We should have... Uh, you are horrible. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site. They're totally free. And uh, those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for accessing their websites. Ours, we give it away. So enjoy at freetalklive.com. Coming up, we are going to Texas, Mark, again. Yeah, if you're interested in the future of, the, of Bitcoin and peer to, the peer-to-peer -peer economy, you can head on over to the second annual Bitcoin conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March the 28th and 29th and hang out with us and lots of other great speakers. And, of course, there'll be great exhibits and an opportunity to do some networking as well as hosting. And I think this is the most exciting part of the Texas Bitcoin conference because there's no conference that does this anything like this the second million dollar bitcoin 2.0 hackathon so one million dollars right i mean if you're doing uh, what bitcoin's about is the people that create the new technology that money's going to fund the ideas yes. that come out of the hackathon right sure so uh, and so if somebody comes up with a really winner awesome bitcoin futuristic kind of idea they could get funded they will get funded if they win right right um and they are and likely several to win. winners aren't they they kind of there were up. last year but that doesn't mean that there necessarily will be this that's year. true we're not in charge of the contest so i don't know but what is fascinating bitcoin's about the technology it's about the technological innovation if you're going to have a bitcoin conference and you're not going to have a hackathon this is the only million dollar hackathon yeah. but if you're not going to have a hackathon you don't have a conference hmm. it's like having a basketball conference and having no professional basketball players there <laughs> I mean, it, it, this is what it's about. So please come out and uh, hang out with us. You go to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get the tickets. Uh, you just use coupon code FTL. You'll get $25 yeah. off the $150 ticket. Good um, price. Good yep, price it's a great point. price. It's very affordable for these kind of conference events. But not only that, the Texas Bitcoin Conference will also donate $25 to Sean's Outpost for with every ticket purchase when you use the code. So you're getting an amazing price on a great event. And you're also helping out Sean's Outpost with their outpost outreach and assistant, assistance to the homeless. It's Free Talk Live. We were there last year. It's going to be great. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets and be part of the future. Okay, you can talk about anything you want here on Free Talk Live. We uh, just you know finished a conversation about the Masons, which there's a group of people out there that believe that they're evil Satanists, and then there's the others who say they're just 
you know, some good guys in the community. They're people who want to help the community, and they're not bad people. They're just, you know, they have some secrets because it's their club, and they're it's certainly funny. free to have secrets. So you're welcome to share your thoughts with us here, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Here is the news about the Silk Road. I've been teasing it throughout the night tonight, and then coming up, Daryl will be telling us about how the Ross Ulbricht trial, which is kicking off tomorrow morning, could affect the entire Internet, and that sounds pretty serious. But first, from Vice.com, who, by the way, as I understand it, are attending the Silk Road trial. There's oh. not, From what I've heard, there's not a whole lot of major media that seems to be interested in, uh, and I shouldn't call it the Silk Road trial, the Ross Ulbricht trial. I was about to correct you yeah. on that because I saw a post on Facebook earlier today that said, please stop calling it the Silk Road trial. Yeah, it was Jim Babb, I think. Because you're that. essentially doing the prosecution's job for them by making the connection that they are alleging. Yeah, okay. It hasn't been proven yet that Ross Ulbricht was in charge of the Silk Road, but that will certainly be what the prosecution is trying to prove come tomorrow morning. So here's the news from Vice.com. This just published yesterday. A new anonymous online drug market has emerged, but instead of using the now famous or now infamous Tor network, it uses the little-known I2P alternative. Silk Road Reloaded launched today and is only accessible by downloading the special I2P software or by configuring your computer in a certain way to connect to I2P web pages called EAP sites and which end in the suffix .i2p. So if, for instance, you wanted to go to the Silk Road Reloaded site, you would go to silkroadreloaded.i2p. Now, that's, that's kind of neat. That's, that's a lot one, easier to get to than right, the, using the, Tor. Well, right. The Tor sites, that was what I was about to explain, is you can't just give a Tor site over the airwaves because the Tor website is like... You know, I've it's actually a mess. Got, just a yeah, bunch of letters. Just a and bunch numbers. of letters. Road dot three seven five yeah. two uppercase seven. So, sometimes dot onion. Sometimes within a uh, Tor address, you can see a word, but then there's always some jumbles of letters. So, like you know, the the Silk Road, the newer Silk Road site on the on Tor is they actually have the word reload reloaded in their site name, but yeah. then it's U D J T J V X R, and you know nobody can remember that stuff. So. Kudos to the I2P guys for making memorable addresses, but you still have to go through a setup process to you know, get the I2P thing working. Now, it's not just the switch to I2P that marks a change, whereas the original Silk Road and its successor Silk Road 2.0 exclusively accepted Bitcoin. The new Silk Road Reloaded will process transactions in other cryptocurrencies by converting them into Bitcoin through the site's built-in wallet. They include a non-coin, which, as the name suggests, is a more anonymity-focused cousin of Bitcoin. Dark Coin is also listed, which last November became an acceptable form of currency on Nucleus, a Tor marketplace. And you can also use Dogecoin, the meme-inspired altcoin, as well as the more established Litecoin. In all, eight different altcoins are accepted, with others slated to join soon. The administrators say on the site they're open to suggestions on other coins to use and will consider it if you contact them. The administrators of online markets have typically made their money by taking a small slice of the profits from those selling drugs on the site. Silk Road Reloaded does the same, but it will also take a 1% conversion fee whenever an altcoin is converted into Bitcoin on the site, and they do require that all coins be converted into Bitcoin. I have taken the time to get I2P working on the studio computer here and then log into the new Silk Road Reloaded. So I, I have actually been to the site. Um, there's nothing there. So <laughs> there's nothing all, has been purchased. For all of the publicity that this new site has gotten so far today. It's the name. Yeah. There are sites where you can go purchase drugs at this point. Silk Road s spawned a lot of them. It's just somebody decided I'm going to continue to use this name. Right. Now, uh, according to a message on the site posted yesterday, quote, all functions are completely enabled and fully functional. Sample data is being removed. Current vendors, your products will show shortly. Thank you for making the site launch a success. At the time of writing, it appears the listings are placeholders with no concrete details on what is actually being sold. These have been listed by sysadmin, and judging by the announcement on the site, this will change shortly, being replaced by real products. On the list of products, I found a total of six, and of those six... Some of them were still listed by sysadmin, so it looks like a kind of a rough start for the Silk Road Reloaded, and you're right, Mark, they're getting attention just because they've slapped the term Silk Road on this 
what appears to be, you know, not quite ready for prime time sight, at least, you know, thus far. It would have seemed like they could have made a more softer launch, maybe gone out and, and posted links to the different forums of the black markets that already exist and try to stir up news that way well, and then eventually get Maybe they get tried Vice. that and somebody from you know Vice caught wind of it. Could be. And said, hey, let me write about this. But it's this. not just Vice. It's This is popping up in a lot of different places. So I don't know. Maybe they're oh. going to flip a switch and tonight a bunch of listings will go I'm up, not but. questioning their marketing on this one uh, at this point. I, I, I think it'd be better to have more stuff when you uh, come out of the gate. But... What the concern is is that I think people aren't going to adopt it right away. They want to see what's going on because these sites, at this point, it's been alleged that was it Silk Road 3.0 was actually set up by the by government 2.0. agents. Well, Silk Road 2.0? 2.0, according to the government's indictment of Blake Benthal, was infiltrated before it even started That's, by an yeah. agent. So obviously, a lot of people are reticent. <laughs> To continue on with the Silk Road franchise, so to speak. 855 450 free. More coming up. Ouch! My back is out again. Hi, Dr. Ortman with Wellspring Spinal Care. If you're experiencing neck, mid, or lower back pain, this information is for you. One of the complaints that I hear is patients receive their typical adjustment, only having to repeat them as the pain returns. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the battle. At Wellspring Spinal Care, we have the entire solution. We use the NUCA approach, utilizing three-dimensional x-rays and gentle touch technology to deliver specific correction. We then design Design a custom nutritional supplement program which provides essential nutrients targeting the areas of concern. With a NUCA approach and proper nutrition, you'll be on your way to a faster and more permanent recovery. To get you on the road to wellness, visit drortman.com. That's Dr. O R T M A N.com. Or call us today, 952 303 9124. That's 952 303 9124. Wellspring Spinal Care, chiropractic done right. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you drinking too much and it's destroying your life? If you're ready to quit drinking, we have a real solution for you that can help you quit drinking within hours. That's right. We can help you quit drinking within hours. It's not magic. It's medical science. At Sober Time, we'll show you how this simple 20-minute outpatient medical procedure will turn off your cravings within hours. Let's face it. If you don't crave a drink, you're not going to drink. And if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. The medication is FDA approved and covered by most major insurance plans. So if you're really ready to stop drinking and get your life back, call Sober Time now for a free consultation. 
patients have nearly an 85% success rate. So here's the number. Call right now. 800-659-0267, You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian. Daryl. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com where you can enjoy the features totally free. Mark, you're going to be traveling down to Mexico again shortly. That's right. I'm going to Acapulco this time for Anarchapulco. And what it is is Jeff Berwick. This is uh, the, the, the guy behind the dollar vigilante. He's billing Acapulco as the new Liberty destination. And I want to see it for myself. I figure... And Arcapulco is the event that's a perfect time to go take a look. Speakers include, of course, Jeff Berwick and Angel Clark, who's recently moved down there, but also Roger Veer, who we had on the show recently, uh, last week, um, talking about, uh, was the the topic? I can't remember it. Something to do with Bitcoins, what, right? What, Roger? Yes. Uh, what he was talking about on our show? Yes. Now he can't get into the United States because uh, the U.S. bureaucrats are telling him that he can't have a visa, even though he's given the U.S. government over three hundred thousand dollars recently. Huh. They their excuse, Mark, is that they believe that he is going to try to stay here as an illegal immigrant. Wonderful. Yeah. Nutty folks. Even though he's gone through the process of renouncing his citizenship, which is why he has to get a visa in order to, if he if he's going to come in, he has to get a visa to do that, to come in legally. So he's gone through this ridiculous, arduous process and expensive and time consuming process of becoming or of renouncing citizenship. And they're claiming that that now he's going to want to come and live here illegally. I mean, it's just crazy. That is, it's insane. Yeah. yeah and there have been uh, court rulings that basically say once you renounce your U.S. citizenship, you cannot return to the United States. If you renounced it to avoid taxes. Yes. And he's paying his taxes. He's paid everything. Well, not everything, but well. he's paid a good chunk of it. He's paying down <laughs> I wouldn't pay him anything if yeah. they didn't give me a visa. Yeah. Screw you people. I'm not right. going back. You can't put me in jail. Like, I mean, this makes no sense. It's crazy. If you come back. And you act like you're going to stay. We're going to make sure you stay in one of our jails. I'd like, <laughs> these, it's insane. Uh, also, uh, guests include Cody Wilson, the creator of the uh, the, the printable gun, Nima V, the uh, rapper, Objectivist Girl, our own Objectivist Girl, Luke Rodkowski, um, Dania Martin, the unschooling queen, Ernie Hancock, and many more. And so what more do you, reason do you need to go to Acapulco in February? This is going to be, for those of you up north, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's going to be awesome. Hotels are a reasonable rate and tickets are less than $100 if you register by Christmas. Whoops, that's some old copy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess they've gone up a bit. They're still not terribly uh, expensive. There are workshops all during the week ahead of time, but the uh, action really heats up on uh, the weekend. So it's February 27th through March the 1st. And and I'm excited about the unschooling workshop that they're going to have there the week the, during the week. Go take a look at the schedule. See what works for you. It's anarchapolco.com. It's the new Liberty Destination, anarchapolco.com. All right. Uh, back to your calls and thoughts. Glenn, he's in Philadelphia, and you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Glenn. Uh, yes. Hello, guys. Um, oh. Yeah, calling, calling about the, the Freemasonry thing, uh, the fellow who was just on, I mean— uh, I find it kind of amazing uh, for him to say that he, uh, you know, here in the U.S., people can progress to the 32nd degree of Freemasonry, like, over a weekend. Um, Are you a Mason? Would, that would represent my grandfather was a 32nd Freemason in okay. the Shriner. My father's third degree Blue Lodge. Spent a lot of time, you know, studying the backgrounds of this stuff. Um, and if, you, if he, someone, he hasn't read Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, he, he doesn't really know <clears throat> anywhere near the whole story of how the thing works. And Are the Freemasons the other, same as the Masons? Yeah, they're called the Scott. Well, yes, yes, yes. They call them Masons. They have the it's, in the U.S. It's the Scottish Rite Freemasonry. In Britain, it's more the York Rite. Now there are all these different you know subdivisions. And the way Freemasonry functioned in the you know the bulk of the 20th century 
was was very different apparently than how it works now because their roles are way down. During the the 50s, 40s, and 50s and stuff, they had vibrant youth organizations. The boys' group was called the Demolay, and the girls' group was called the Rainbow Girls. The adult women's group was the Eastern Star, and you know they and they were more. They're way more middle class, working class, you know, members of these larger groups, and um, each you know each different um, level, each different degree has its own handshake. You learn certain things. Each has its own. Uh, horrific uh, swearing in oath. I mean, the initial first degree oath when you become a Mason, you've heard the term hoodwinked. Well, it involves, you know, weird stuff like the guy winks at you and pulls a hood over your head, puts a noose around your neck. You pull you have one leg, one of your pant legs is rolled up, and one side of your breast is laid bare. And then your leg, you are having been hoodwinked, you're then led down the, you know, path, and you go, you go through this um, oath, this, this horrific oath where you swear that if you ever divulge anything, you know, your head should be cut off and be buried in the rough sands of the sea. And, you know, with each degree level, the oaths get more horrific and, and crazy. And just to be clear, I mean, you <laughs> learned this from reading Albert Pike's book? We're reading a variety of different, um, you know, you can read, you know, uh, there's Albert Pike's book. That's just one. That's that's uh, Morals and Dogma of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. There are all kinds of other books written about masonry. There are all kinds of works by manly people. So what you're saying so is, so just to be clear, what you're saying is the free the people who've called this show who claim to be masons are lying, that uh, they are they're, being... Well, they're feeding, you the, they're feeding you the easy go, oh, yeah, we're just a bunch of nice guys. But, you know, look, my father, for every year when I was a kid, in the 60s, they'd have the Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers uh, you know, circus come around as a fundraiser for. And what's funny is there's a lot of astro- astrology in Freemasonry, okay. and uh, even in a three ring circus, there's a lot of astrology. But they would sponsor this three ring circus. The Clyde Coles would come around. They'd earn what money. What kind of astrology is there in a three ring circus? Hmm? What kind of astrology is in a three ring <laughs> circus? Because I've been to uh, well, several three ring circuses, and I didn't no, realize no, the no, Satanism no, was floating around me. Well, precisely because you weren't designed to look up a. Google it sometime. I'm not going to go into it, but like, you know, the rings are representing orbits and stuff like that, and the tent and the sky and all that kind of stuff. Believe it or not, it sounds goofy, but I just, it's no coincidence that. So, so basically, let circuit. me see if I can boil this down. Shriners hospitals, you know, they have Shriners hospitals to, for children to this day, where they were especially known for um, doing. Um, Liver and liver are all fixators for lengthening bones for children with short limbs. Short legs. I thought the Shriners um, were known for burn victims. Um, the, the big thing they were known for here in Philadelphia when they had the hospital on the boulevard, it's since now moved down into the city, where it was, because uh, I was a nursing student, I went there and I saw them, you know, with several of the Elizaroff fixator people. Now, are you going to say, are you saying the uh, Shriners are bad guys too, or just the, the Masons? Uh, I'm saying, well, there's, well, there's good and, <laughs> there's good and bad mix. They, they look, if you read in Albert Pike, who was a, a Civil War Confederate general who was basically the Pope of American Freemasonry. A statue of him stands in Washington, D.C., not far from the humongous Freemasonic Temple in D.C., which is right down there, the capital area. And here in Philadelphia, we have a Masonic Temple directly across Broad Street, a huge monolithic granite cathedral type thing right across from City Hall. It's not a coincidence that these huge Masonic facilities that exist right next to the buildings and the seats of our government. Okay. Well, yeah, the government. Is, uh, there know, are a lot of Masons that w- established this country. I mean, there's that's absolutely right. a true and statement. Every, but there are a lot of Christians. Every, every but there are. Hold on. But wait. There are a lot of Christians mm-hmm. that established the country too. So that in and of itself is not right. an indictment. Right. 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 No. Right. I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm, right. Right. But I'm just saying it's established that they're not some. You know, powerless fraternity of guys who like to do beer and pizza. Churches across the street from you the know, government's right. buildings too. Yeah. Right now, but I'm just saying there's a lot of power involved here, and um, you know, and it's I I won't I wouldn't say that the power has waned, but I would suggest that like it seems to me like uh, in the 20th century there was a lot more uh, keeping a much broader social involvement. You know, the youth groups, the you know more people in the different degrees and stuff working way through. Uh, the, the groups are much smaller, and uh, it just seems to me that they're smaller, like and more elite now. You know, you're more likely well, to find. This guy him. said he just walked into their doctor. meeting. I mean, he said he just walked in. Right. It doesn't sound very elite right, to right, me. Right, right, So if you seek, right, if you seek them out, um, yeah, sure. You know, there's like you join the fire coming, but they don't necessarily. They're not. They, they don't. They, the youth organizations are practically non-existent. I mean, I knew one guy in okay. Delay when I was still. So basically, it's a he said, she said thing. You know, there's like the people who are the conspiracy theorists. 
thank you, Glenn, for your call tonight. There are people who you know say things about the uh, for whatever reason my phone software is not working right now. So I'd like to ask the board off to. Uh, take care of dropping the call for me. Thanks for the call, Glenn. I appreciate that. Well, the, what, the reading on this is like the internet. You can find out whatever you want to yeah, find out. Yeah, what's the truth? Nobody really seems to know. It's Free Talk Live. If you're overwhelmed by debt and thinking about going to a credit counseling company for help, think again. Because the majority of those companies actually work for the credit card companies and they make the credit card companies a lot of money from people just like you. But there's another way out of debt, and it's not bankruptcy. A way to reduce your debts and save you thousands of dollars. Even better, you can find out how for free by calling 1-800-509-1075. At Freedom Debt Relief, we're not a credit counseling organization. We're not a debt consolidation company. We offer a unique alternative to save you the most money possible to resolve your debt in the shortest amount of time. If you're thinking about a credit counselor, Ask yourself this, are they working for you or the credit card companies? Reduce your debts and save thousands of dollars by learning the secrets to settling your debt. For free information, call 1-800-509-1075. That's 1-800-509-1075. 1-800-509-1075. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and the normal toll-free line that we give out typically is broken at the moment. You cannot call the toll-free number. You will have to if you would like to participate. At this point, you'll have to contact us via Skype at username lrn.fm, or you can use our alternate New Hampshire number, which is 603-435-1105. That's 603 603- 435-1105 and we will get you on the air here so that's why we've got kind of we've got kind of like a decentralized setup here if the network's phone system goes down we've got our own phone lines right here in our studio in Keene, new hampshire so uh, we still got plenty of uh, options for you to dial in 603-435-1105 the uh, discussion has gone on to the masons here tonight and it seems like the, the perspectives are twofold. There's two sides. There's one that says the Masons are just an innocent group of guys who gets together for fraternal purposes and they go out and they do service jobs. You know, they'll go and work at the, the local food kitchen or something like that. They'll do some sort of service oriented things in the community and that they're just a bunch of good guys looking to help the community. The other perspective that we've now heard from a couple callers on is that they're Satanists and they're evil and that they uh, just read the thing written by albert pike albert pike who apparently was involved in the masons at some point in the past a long time ago and he says there's a bunch of stuff you can read and that's just the thing there's sure there's a lot of uh, speculation there's a lot of claims out there and you can't really verify this stuff unless i guess you go ahead and become a mason right and then of course then you're sworn to secrecy on certain things and so if you reveal that will they cut your head off i don't know what happens if you break their vow are there secrecy. a lot of Masons that have gotten their heads cut off? Because the information, you know, information's all out on the internet, right? I don't know if the information is all out on the internet. I, it's, I, I would imagine that some of this stuff is still kept behind well, closed doors. And I'm skeptical of anybody who makes these uh, the, the claims that, you know, some organization that's got a sign on the street, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can drive down the street and you can see there's a Mason Lodge there. Yep. Those aren't the Satanists. Satanists don't hang their sign out on the street. You can't find them in the yellow pages. Mm. I mean, people that are really chopping heads off of people and doing like, <laughs> weird incantations come on i mean if you're if you're falling for this line of bull then, i mean i just don't get it yeah I, like you know re- remember the heevens gate group yeah. uh that you know they castrated yeah. themselves they and they got holes comet, of quarters right? they and killed comet. themselves to go catch a comet they didn't have a sign out front that said suicide cult mm-hmm. they didn't have a sign out front that said heaven's gate you just had to know you know that go to that house cult. And wear, you know, all black and, like, you know, Nike shoes or whatever. You had to know. Like, you know, they weren't advertising. So I think that, you know, the Masons, because they have the secrecy aspect, does get people It just drives people bananas. Yeah. If I said I've got a... You and I, Ian, have a secret that we've written down on a piece of paper... And it's in our filing cabinet here in the studio. This is an accurate statement. We have a contract uh, between you and I, an okay. agreement to do business. It's not really a secret, though. We, but we have it. It's okay. What's on it is a secret, essentially. Not really. I mean, I've told people what I pay you. Yeah, but what Pay me? Well, you, I get the, I get the majority the of the money that comes in. You bring the checks. <laughs> Who works for whom here, buddy? I cut you the majority of the checks. <laughs> That's not a secret. <laughs> right, but, like, the details are... Of the percentage, it was ninety percent to start, yes, and all of these other things, yeah. like you know, They're every word of the contract is not available for public right. scrutiny. But so, it's not, it's not secret. Well, I mean, if somebody really wanted to know, I what they could bust in, what would no, you I do? Would, if anybody who really wants to know, I'm not going to tell because it's none of their business, right? Like if you were, if we were having a conversation, I might tell people what our arrangement is, but yeah. I, I would prefer not to just share well, my business all over then. the street. If you, if you, if you would tell someone. Then it's if not it a hasn't secret. been told, then it is still a secret. And there are aspects of the contract that have not well, been told. told I'm only trying to give a genie example, <laughs> you pedantic moron! All right, so there is a contract that every... I missed you. Oh, he's yelling already. There is a secret through one in the drawer. He did have caffeine. A little oh, bit. Oh, he did. What did he drink? The Dr. Pepper? Dr. Pepper. An entire oh, can of Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors you of caffeine. have enabled him tonight, Daryl. Shame I didn't you. sell it to him. He didn't. Oh, okay. You told him where to get it, though, because he asked you if you knew where it was. Yeah. Because you had one, and you yes. told him where. So, pretty much the enabler. There's a secret in the drawer. 
if there's a secret, somebody is going to be bothered by that secret. Yeah, sure. And that's what the problem is here. What you have is this a, With the Masons. Is, is a group of people that want to do good in their community. It, this Allegedly. Is what I see. Do good in their, They're hanging a sign out, okay? I, I just, I, I can't believe. May not be the only thing they're hanging. I cannot believe that uh, a group of <laughs> murderer, murderous sacrificers have a sign out on Main Street. <laughs> I, I, I did, just, did you learn that word from George Bush? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sacrificers. I don't know. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry. There's, I, If there's a secret society, mm. and I believe there are secret societies, and I may even believe there's secret societies that kill people for kicks. Mm. It isn't the Masons. The military. Wait, that's not a secret. Not a secret. Not a secret. No. Then I don't think they do it for kicks. I think they do it because some they're people some do. Some of them do. Certainly, there are people that are murderous that uh, join the military. I, um, as a matter of fact, I was at Starbucks one time talking to a kid who was going to join the military. This has been years ago, and he said, uh, it's great. You can go and kill people and not mm. get in trouble for it. Yeah. So there you go. The I'd be far more worried about that. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. So we were talking a moment ago about the Silk Road, this new I2P version of the Silk Road. So right now there are two Silk or two sites claiming to be the Silk Road. There's the one on the Tor anonymizing system, which is called Silk Road 3.0, uh, but that also has the word reloaded in the Tor onion name. And now there's this new one, which literally just launched yesterday or something, called Silk Road Reloaded, available over I2P. According to Vice.com, uh, they say the catalog lists many of the things we've come to expect from an online marketplace, including drugs, counterfeit money and IDs, hacking tools, and fake clothing. Notably absent are weapons and stolen credit card details, something which some tour sites, such as Evolution, now sell in abundance. This lack, Which is interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't realize there was a, a site out there now selling weapons, this Evolution site. Tried to get on it today, but it wasn't working, which sometimes happens with tour. Anyway, this... Lack yeah, of I, I have to say it makes me nervous, these ideas of all these really crazy weapons being available, but I guess they're available already. Well, I don't know what crazy weapons are available, so that's why I'd like to go and log into the site and just kind of see what's Grenade out there. Grenade launchers, things like that, that disturbs me. Have you been on the site? You've no, seen that's what they I'm just, have? I'm, I'm just imagining. You're speculating then, so that's why I they're would They're probably like to get not on selling there. a battleship. Well, obviously not. Yeah, It has to be something you can ship uh, in the mail. And I, as I understood it, back when Silk Road launched its... Sister site, which didn't last for very long. God, what was it called? The Armory. The Armory. Uh, that uh, there were hardly ever any listings on there. And one of the tricky things about selling these guns was that it was risky to send a gun in a in one package. So mm. they would be like disassembled or something like that, and then sent individually in several different packages. At least that's what I heard. I I don't know. If if that was true or not. So, well, uh, the lack of weapons and stolen data may be due to the site owner's apparent political beliefs. It appears the site owner subscribed to the same libertarian motivations that inspired the original Silk Road. Quote, who are we? Ones who care about true freedom, self-ownership, and self-possession. Yes, believe it or not, you own yourself, unquote, says the site. It goes on, saying, what exactly does this mean? Many things. But first and foremost, we nor anyone that we nor anyone else has the right or privilege to tell you what to do with your person on any level, except and unless you cause harm to someone's property or person. We created this to allow the most basic of human activities to incur unimpeded, that being trade. It's not only a major disruption of progress, but it's an interference to control someone to the degree that their free will is compromised. We may not be able to stop this, but we certainly won't contribute to it. Enjoy the sight. Naturally, the Silk Road Reloaded has its own forum as well. At the moment, there isn't a single posting, but it seems to function normally. I contacted the owners of the site using the inbuilt, this is the article at vice.com, using the inbuilt messaging system, but haven't yet received a reply. I wanted to ask why they had made the switch from I2P, or rather to I2P, from Tor, to speculate the recent tide in security worries about Tor may have contributed to this move. I'll bet. Even if those worries were ultimately unjustified and Tor remains robust. Although both Tor and I2P are anonymity networks, there are some key differences. One of those differences is the greater degree of decentralization that I2P offers. According to the I2P website, Tor takes the directory-based approach, providing a centralized point to manage the overall view of the network, as well as gather and report statistics, as opposed to I2P's distributed network database and peer selection. What the hell that means, I don't know. 
but uh, the I2P <laughs> software. I certainly don't. The you know the technical. Maybe there's like a tech listener out there who could call and explain to us this why this never goes well. Rarely, rarely goes well. When you to ask, have an explanation. When, when you have to ask the tech guy to call in and, and explain the differences. But I want the explanation to be understandable in like English terms. Right, by and the most person. tech guys don't know how to explain it in regular terms that a normal person understands. Well, I'm asking for help here, so if anybody can explain it, take with, your shot at it in easily understandable terms. Feel free, but decentralized sounds good, right? Like we I like, like that. Uh, yes. So and and also maybe the I2P thing wasn't made by the government. That might be a good thing. Yeah, I don't know disturbing. who made I2P, but I. I've heard Tor was made by DARPA. Uh, there's more coming up here in moments on Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was originally not scheduled to attend the Paris Solidarity March and only announced he was going after Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman revealed he was going as well, not wanting to let a high-profile visit pass ahead of the March elections. But Netanyahu was not a welcome guest, and French President Francois Hollande explicitly asked him not to come, concerned he would make the whole visit about Israel and the Palestinians. When Netanyahu insisted he was coming anyhow, Holland made a point to publicize his invitation to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. The Holland government was working on a UN resolution trying to kickstart peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, and Netanyahu has loudly opposed it. Predictably, Netanyahu and other Israeli officials visiting France today urged French Jews to leave the country for Israel, arguing France isn't safe. That's been a long-standing policy of the Israeli right, which believes it needs major Jewish immigration to sustain a majority and has regularly targeted France as the nation with the largest Jewish population in the world outside of Israel and the United States. With Holland desperate to portray himself as having the security situation in order, it's understandable that he would not want Netanyahu and others trying to drum up immigration. 
Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday will take up a new religious rights case when it considers whether a town in Arizona discriminated against a local church by forcing it to remove signs notifying the public of its worship services. The nine justices are set to hear a one-hour argument in an appeal filed by the Good News Community Church, which objected to its treatment by the town officials of Gilbert, Arizona. The church says its free speech rights protected by the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment were violated. The court's last decision on a religious themed issue came last June. The justices ruled five to four that owners of private companies can object on religious grounds to a provision of President Barack Obama's signature health care law that requires employers to provide insurance covering birth control for women. The Arizona case is not as contentious with the town receiving little support and the Obama administration backing the church. The church's lead pastor, Clyde Breed, said the town's 2008 sign ordinance treated religious messages different than other types of signs. The ordinance has different categories based on content that determine the size of the sign, where it can be placed, and how long it can be displayed. The church signs were deemed to be event signs, which meant they received far worse treatment than other types, including those displaying political and ideological messages. The town's lawyer asked the Supreme Court not to hear the case, in part because of a new, less restrictive sign ordinance that was enacted in 2011. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Attorney General Eric Holder said on Sunday the investigation into former CIA director and retired General David Petraeus will be conducted fairly. The FBI and Department of Justice have recommended charges against Petraeus with leaking classified information to his former lover, biographer Pamela Broadwell. He allegedly gave her access to his CIA email account and other classified information during their affair. The details of the investigation were first reported by the New York Times. Some senators have voiced their support for Petraeus and have pushed back against calls for the disgraced director to be formally charged. Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, told CNN's State of the Union that Petraeus has suffered enough. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In Baltimore, the streets have gotten safer thanks to the success of the new permanent daylight initiative, which aims to prevent crime by illuminating the entire city 24 hours a day using high-powered floodlights. It's just that it's so bright all the time, even in the rain. City officials say there have been a zero violent crime since the start of the program, except for one man who vandalized the light by throwing his body off a building into it. Now let's set our crosshairs on to Mountain View, California, where Gmail servers were down for nearly two hours today. Today. In an online statement, the company said, tremble before Google with the mere flip of a switch, we can bring you to your knees. After reestablishing service this afternoon, Google changed its logo and released a statement saying, if not appeased with a 20% increase in Google Chrome downloads by the next vernal equinox, they will take back their generous gift unto mankind of colored conversation labeling. All right, you can take off your helmet. You have survived the news blitz. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We are entering into yet another hour of this show. You may bring up whatever's on your mind, but you may not do it via our normal toll-free number. You cannot dial that number at the moment because, yeah, well, something's broken back at the network studios in Minnesota. However, our phone lines are working just fine right here in Keene, New Hampshire. But you'll have to dial a regular long-distance telephone number to get in touch with us. It's 603 603- 435-1105. That's 603-435-1105. And we still have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We've been talking about the Silk Road. Coming up, Daryl is going to explain to us 
why it is that the Silk Road could, this case, or excuse me, the Ross Ulbricht case that's coming up tomorrow, why this case could affect the entire internet. All right, that's a big, uh, and I actually answered Mike for you to try that again, Daryl. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad that we got that in. <laughs> so uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. But first, we go to your calls and thoughts. Uh, we've got Nick. He's on the lines on uh, in Ohio. Hello, Nick. Oh, uh, try again. I mean, it seems to me as if Silk Road Reloaded has beaten them to the punch, but I thought Open Bazaar was like the – the big decentralized peer-to-peer marketplace that was going to come online in 2015. Do you guys know anything about that? Or? Yes. Uh, we actually interviewed the guy from Open Bazaar, one of the guys from Open Bazaar back at uh, down at Coins in the Kingdom. Coins in the Kingdom, yeah. In Orlando last year in the fall of uh, 2014, and the guy was great. I thought he was great on, uh, on the air. He was interesting. The Open Bazaar concept is a cool concept, essentially – as I recall, uh, it wasn't using Tor. It was uh, it was using the blockchain or something. What was it? I, I'm kind of spacing on exactly how the that was well, set up. Now people had the stuff on their computers. They did the whole thing. The whole website yeah, was on a, people's computers. A, yeah, it's a program that you download onto your computer, and then <clears throat> once you do that, you're connected to the network. And it could be uh, used anonymously, but it, as from what I understood, the current versions of Open Bazaar are not anonymous and cannot be used anonymously. So, but the idea was behind Open Bazaar, at least as I as I understood it, was that if the if the operators of Open Bazaar aren't actually running their own server, that each individual node on the network is essentially the site, if you will, or the service. That therefore they wouldn't be able to be held responsible for the items that were sold there. That's my understanding of of how it works. Allegedly. And also, because there isn't a central server to be taken down, right? if one of the operators or all of the operators wind up getting arrested... It continues. ...then the you know site, so to speak, is still around because right. it's not on a single server. Because it's decentralized in how it operates in the same way that Bitcoin network cannot be taken down. They could take out MT Gox or some other website that takes or sells Bitcoin or whatever, but that doesn't take down the Bitcoin network. It's hey, impossible. Ian Mount Gox closed about a year ago, no, so you that. don't have to worry about that one getting taken down That's anymore. what I meant, is they went down and Bitcoin is still there, right? Like Because that's what people tried to... That's what some people who were uninformed about Bitcoin were saying when, They're Ma- still saying when Mount it. Gox... Went down. I thought it? Bitcoin went away a couple of right. years ago. <laughs> uh, so Bitcoin's fine, and it's just because it's decentralized, which was the idea behind Open Bazaar. I haven't been on Open Bazaar site in a few weeks, but we talked about it probably maybe like two months ago on Free Talk Live or a few months ago. And I did log in and I did kind of get it up and running and test it out. And, you know, there wasn't much there, but again, it's not anonymous yet. And so. then there's the NXT free market that runs as an add on to the NXT client. Yeah, I tried that one out too. I was less impressed with that than I was Open Bazaar. Well, partly because you downloaded the wrong client to begin with. Yeah. yeah Ian. Well, you know, if it's not easy to use, you know, people aren't going to get on board with it. So there's yeah, that. Yeah, Daryl. Okay. So you're saying that Open Bazaar is not totally anonymous uh, in the same way that Bitcoin is not. Right? Uh, well, I don't know if it's the same way. Uh, from what I understand, the programmers of Open Bazaar have said that at this stage in the game, it is not yet something that you could use for anonymous use. But at some point in the future that it would be, you know, and obviously you have to take their word for it unless you're a programmer and you can go in and edit their code. Um, but yeah, so right as, as of when we interviewed him, which was several months ago, a few months ago, it was not uh, ready for anonymous use. And I suspect that is still the case. But again, I haven't been to their website, so I'd, I would check with Open Bazaar on that one if you want the latest information. But yeah, I think that's a cool idea. And I don't know if uh, Silk Road Reloaded on this new I2P service that we were talking about last hour, uh, you know, I don't know if that's going to outcompete Open Bazaar because Silk Road Reloaded is still a site that is using some sort of I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a centralized server. I'm not sure how I2P works, but I'm pretty sure that it's not being hosted on other people's computers. It just might be more anonymized than say Tor's service would. So I think that the other thing that Open Bazaar was going to be good for was that they weren't going to take fees from people. Like you know, if you could list your stuff on You're Open Bazaar. You're playing Ian's song there. 
Yeah, man. Well, you know, if you're going online to buy stuff from these underground marketplaces, usually the marketplace itself will will snag about four to fifteen percent. Or whatever. I wonder what the overhead is when you go to a mall, you know, and you buy your clothing or whatever yeah, it's it is. Fairly you high, there, right? So, I mean, so far the paradigm is is that if you have a store in a place, that that place gets some of the money. There's um, nothing wrong with that, but no. if you can cut the fees out and just allow dealers to vend directly to their buyers without having some middleman taking a cut, then that's Certainly. ideal. Right, it, it could it could outcompete. Right, that's going to attract people. If you can go and buy item X for you know whatever the price, and you can buy the same item for that price except less five percent, there's going to be people who go to that other uh, that other location. A lot of them. So no, I'm excited about it. It seems like two legs of the triangle have been taken care of. Like we have a digital currency now. We have an anonymous marketplace, or at least we will pretty mm-hmm. soon, decentralized. So the third leg, right, is the couriers. How do we? How do you transport stuff without using without getting intertwined with the government? That's the the missing piece. Well, I the guess. postal service has been doing a fine job delivering drugs all around the country for the Silk Road and all of its like sites. I mean, the post. <laughs> I mean, believe it or yeah, not, the postal true. service is the best way to send drugs through uh, <laughs> through the mail. I mean, the, right? Why? Because because it's pseudo government, so they have to have more reasonable suspicion to oh. open a package right they have to have than a warrant ups or fedex right so just as an example they uh, as i understand it they have to have a warrant to go through somebody's mail to actually you know open up a package and inspect it whereas if the cops show up at your local ups office you know wherever the shipping facility is there and they say hey we're looking for this package coming through from wherever and it's coming to this place and we need to take a look inside there they're going to let them look and that's happened before where the, the feds or whoever, local cops have gone in. There was I remember we read a story about this where they knew a, a deal was going to go down. I think it might have been New Hampshire, but I forget, forget where. And they went in there and they actually had one of their cops dressed as a UPS guy standing in the uh, you know the lobby waiting for this guy to show up so like the, the UPS guys were willing to work completely with the police. They gave him a uniform to do a bust. So yeah, so the Postal Service's best option, I mean, there's not going to be anybody who's going to be able to compete with them because, well, as Daryl pointed out earlier in the show, it's illegal to compete with the Postal Service to send first-class mail. Yes. So anything less than a dollar in postage is considered first-class from what I understand. And although I guess most drug shipments probably cost more than a dollar to ship, um, again, you know, unless you're going to start up a business to compete with FedEx and UPS that's somehow going to be like privacy mail and then you know you'll send that you know, you can send you you're not going to consent to allowing the feds to search your mail then that might be good but i don't think anybody's going to put a investment in like and then you if know, you do like that, that they'll probably you know refuse to grant you permits to fly your airplanes yeah. and use the roads and all kinds of other things yeah so i'd say all three of your legs are there at this point uh, anything else uh, nick you want to share Oh, no, that's it. Thanks, Thanks for the call. Yeah, and keep an eye on that open bazaar, and, and if you see anything change as far as them actually becoming an anonymous system, I'm very interested in knowing when that happens. Thank you, sir. I, I will, certainly. Appreciate yep. it. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Yeah, that open bazaar is a project by some computer hackery guys mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, they have Brilliant no, people. Yeah, sure. brilliant, but they have no monetary interest in it. Right. Like I believe me, you, we sat down with this guy. I had yep. a, we got a couple of days at the coins of the kingdom. I'm a good salesman because I can smell money. Um, it's not there. These sure. guys are putting this crap together with no intention of making any money. They just want they to have believe a free market. That, that the world will be a better place when, uh, you know, we are able free people are able to do business freely without the encumbrances of government. I agree with them. Uh, we'll come back with more on the latest from the Silk Road. There's a new Silk Road out there and it's on not rather it's not on tour it's on i2p not many people know what i2p is i had heard about it before this i had tried it previously and it was just way too confusing but today i actually did get it to work so they made it a little easier to get it rolling more coming up here in moments it's free talk live here's a special message for those of you who owe the irs at least ten thousand or more in back taxes the irs has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. 
These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free and bring up anything that you want. Actually, I'm sorry. You corrected me, guys, after we went off the air in the last segment. The phone lines actually are down. So I apologize because, you know, it's just habit. I give out that, that number as a habit, and you can't use it six right Six times a week. Uh, six, six nights a week. Uh, how many yeah. times per night? Countless you know. times. So the number you can use, we have three lines that you can uh, call in line on here. They're all t connected to the same number, 603-435-1105. That's 603-435-1105. We're doing our own phone screening in here, so uh, you know it'll take a little while longer if you're a somewhat regular caller. You know, we, we can only really answer your calls on the breaks uh, to find out who you are. So we're going to get you on the air, and you can call about anything. You can still call us on Skype, too, and you'll sound better than on the phone at Skype username LRN.FM. And if you want to get some great prices on gold and silver, prices on precious metals have been incredible recently. It is uh, my firm belief that you will see some uh, increase in value on your investment if you make it. Now, 
Take take a talk radio host's uh, investment advice for what it's worth, but Not I believe a damn it. Damn thing. And I've well, it's worth something if they're right. <laughs> and I've got a pretty good track record. <laughs> do you? I do. On the advice that I give people, yeah. But the the question is, is sort of when to sell. Hmm. So if you bought silver when I told you to buy silver back in two thousand and uh, maybe uh, ten, and it was higher than this, and you now you want to sell and you need your money, maybe it wasn't such a great advice. But hmm. it feels like a good advice to me because I've held my silver. So anyway. Go to gold.freetalklive.com to get some great prices on gold and silver. I like silver right now. Gold.freetalklive.com. Yeah, you know, if I buy precious metals, I don't buy them with the idea that I'm going to beat the system or whatever. But I, I think that in the long run, you know, if you look at the history of gold and silver, they have done a good job at kind of keeping you up against inflation and prohibiting you from losing value like somebody would lose if they just held all their money in cash. I think it's good to diversify. Um, I wouldn't make any predictions about what gold or silver is going to do in the future because the hell do I know? It sounds pretty reasonable ex- the price of silver is going to go up from— It's pretty low right now, so pretty darn low. you'd think it'll keep going. And you know, it, it's a up, safe but. bet to say that the value of gold or silver will never be zero. Fairly safe bet, yeah. Unless they can somehow come up with some sort of way to manufacture it from thin air or from some other element. Alchemy. Yeah, at yeah. some point that was have to happen, right? I mean, it could happen. You know. Anyway, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's – oh, no, that is not our toll – that is that is our toll-free number, but it won't work for you right now. <laughs> Use number 603-435-1105. Nobody is on the line on one of those lines calling from the rabbit hole. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, nobody. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? I uh, just wanted to talk about uh, conspiracies and kind of um, my thoughts on conspiracies. But uh, – I've kind of come to think of uh, conspiracies in pretty uh, loose terms. Um, I mean, as far as I think uh, George Carlin uh, put it, like uh, it's just like interest converging. So if you you look around and you you see conspiracies in those terms, and you see it like everywhere, right? So you have the extreme conspiracy, you have the Illuminati and the Freemasons and you know, whatever. Um, but then you, you can look and you can say conspiracies like uh, truck drivers and Christians, where they seem to have these sorts of like unspoken, unwritten pacts. What's the truck themselves. driver conspiracy? I've never There's heard of this truck, one. Truck driver c- uh, conspiracy? Well, they, they, I mean, because they, they relate with one another, right? So they're of like minds and they, they uh, have like, kind of a empathy for one another in their capacity, like, you know, in their line of duty. So they not little... really a conspiracy. I mean, the, yeah. the, the definition of a conspiracy is two or more uh, essentially plotting in secret to do something. To do something evil. That's true. Because otherwise it'd be a pro-spiracy well, would be people working in secret to do something good. Hmm. I think that might be. Uh, well, I'd say it's a soft conspiracy. And, and, and you're saying that they're doing something evil – I would say that they're trying to gain an advantage over uh, outsiders. Okay. Well, so, I mean, the truck drivers uh, just want to get the well. Stuff truck to drivers the have a secret communication method. CB radio. It, well, it's public. Well, it's public. And they, but in the way they drive, it? sometimes they coordinate with one another mm. in the way they maneuver and things like that on the highways. Yeah, I say, I'd that, say you're reaching. I, 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 think, I think there's a. Uh, I think there's something to be said for the statement. I mean, I do consider truck drivers to probably be keeping the doing a better job, even in some cases, than the police of keeping the roads safer. Yeah, I mean, the, the truck drivers have a method of communication, but it's a public method of communication. They, of course, do have truck driver forums that I suppose would be less public. Uh, they have lingo, you know, that they use. But this is not conspiracy talk. I mean, this is not. What about cons- voting? What What about voting? Like secret ballots, you know, all these people that are kind of conspiring in secret to, no, you, you know, gain to... an advantage over other people. Yeah, I wouldn't call the voting process a conspiracy either. I'd, I'd say I'd you're call, reaching here. I'd call uh, opening a business in a lot of cases a conspiracy. Um, I mean, basically, you're keeping proprietary information. You and I don't really do it, Ian, but we don't have much of a business either. Uh, but I mean, if you're manufacturing a product or something like that, you're not going to release the formula for your soft drink out there so people can put it together. So, I mean, to some extent, I would call that a conspiracy because it's being done in secret and it's being done for the purpose of gain. 
All right. Well, that's all I wanted to offer. There you go. Thanks, nobody. 855-450-FREE. That uh, is the toll-free number, but you can't use it. You can use 603-435-1105. I'm sorry (laughs) about that. I'm terrible at this. Mark, are you alleging that Coca-Cola and Colonel Sanders are trying to do something evil by not releasing their recipes? They're in cahoots. I'm not claiming uh, conspiracy is necessarily evil. But that's what the word means. It's, can you read the definition to me? Let me pull up the definition, and I will read it. A but the first plan. part is con, C-O-N, which is opposite of pro. Secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. So, yeah, typically bad stuff. Okay. But a more def, uh, yeah, I guess, I'm, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the definition according to Google.com. So we were talking about I2P, which is a new, or I guess it's not new. It's been around. By the for way, a while, I do think that sugar's a poison. I don't think that when these soft drinks were created, that that's what their thought process was. As a matter of fact, many soft drinks were created by Quakers with the intention of keeping people from drinking alcohol. So uh, we were talking about I2P. This is a, another form of anonymity software available online. It is different from Tor, as is described over at Vice.com. I2P takes a peer-to-peer approach and makes every user's computer a node in the network itself, whereas Tor relies on a series of relays run by volunteers. Then people use their computer to connect to that network. So when you're using Tor, you can choose to be a relay, or you can choose to be an exit node, which is risky because a Tor exit node is essentially where all the Tor traffic comes out to the public Internet. Yes. And so if somebody is, let's say they're seeking, uh, you know, bomb plots or child pornography or something like that, then whoever's running the exit node, it's their computer that's going and, you know, pulling up the child porn. And then that if the feds are looking at that, then the person running the exit node gets busted. Whoa. So Tor's got some problems. I mean, if you're running the exit nodes on Tor, you better not be in, you know, really oppressive places in the world, I would think. Uh, well, but, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be involved in that at all. It sounds very, very risky to run exit nodes. I wouldn't stand on the street corner and loan my gun out to people. Yeah, So, but I2P, they say, is different because all peers are participating in the routing for others there. Other differences include that Tor is much more well-funded, originating as a project by the federal government. We'll come back with more here in moments. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live, 603-435-1105. I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zeta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I-N, the number 4.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Several weeks after the car accident that resulted in the death of his longtime friend Matthew Abrams, local man Keith Bisbee told Onion reporters today that he isn't sure how much longer he should continue using the photo of his deceased friend as his profile picture on Facebook. People can't really expect me to keep this up forever, right? Bisbee told reporters he felt like he had done more than his part to preserve the young man's memory. Bisbee added, however, that he had no idea when to go about changing his profile picture. I'm pretty sure nobody would judge me if I went ahead and changed the photo right now. Matt wouldn't expect me to still have a picture of him up. I mean, I wouldn't expect that of him. You know, I should just do it. Maybe I can go online later tonight when nobody's on. But his girlfriend gets home late from work. I don't really want to seem disrespectful. Maybe he could... Do it tomorrow morning or? At this time, Bisbee has reluctantly changed his profile picture to an image of a gay rights equal sign and is, quote, just waiting to see what happens next. This is the Onion News Network. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want. You just have to do it via an unusual number, 603-435-1105. That's 603-435-1105, and that will ring you directly in here to our Keene, New Hampshire studios because our regular toll-free numbers are on the fritz at the moment. You can also connect with us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And if you need... We, we all need to make sort of legal documents now and then, and there's a variety of them out there. I've got a, just a list of some of them that they have at LegalZoom.com. Prenups, name changes, powers of attorney, divorce, immigration, bankruptcy, uh, information from when you're, you know, pieces of paper you have to file when you got a DUI, DWI, wills, living trusts, uh, patents, business annual reports, not-for-profit annual reports, deed transfers, just a whole variety of things they do over at LegalZoom.com. And they do it significantly less. I remember the first business that I put together, we did a uh, we made a corporation. It cost us like $1,000, some lawyer writing papers up and that sort of thing. And that was par for the course. It doesn't cost anything like that now with the internet. Mm. So go to LegalZoom.com, use coupon code FTL, save 10 bucks. If you don't have a will... I would recommend you get one and use that coupon code because you're letting whatever it is that you've got, you're letting the government decide where it goes. So it's LegalZoom.com, coupon code FTL. Save 10 bucks. All right. So we'll continue here and talk to James in Arizona via Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Mark. Peace is our goal. Love us our way. Liberty as our guide. I don't take Pete the Hangman's profession of being a Christian minister any more than I take you three criminal amigos' professions of being ministers. I don't really but care what you think about my uh, ministerialness. Go I'm ahead just with your thoughts. I'm calling you out, minister. What's I find new, it laughable James? And criminal well, you, James, here, you, I thought that I had a really prescient uh, statement earlier, which is that Christians in this country, um, you know, you know a Christian through their fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self, self-control, those kind of things. Um, and I, when you call on this show, I don't get that love, joy, peace thing out of you. And I wonder, okay, what do you have to say to that? Now that you've taken over my call and spoken more than I even gotten to, what I should say is that if you had those— uh, that spirit as your guide one night when you were on a drug deal and you watched somebody murdered and then gave the guy a lift to the airport 
you call you blame your religion for your having been in that incident i find that that to be a mortal sin that well, you say that such a thing not to mention your your condemnation of christian you're lumping christians like pete the hangman into people that actually do believe that no no there is i'm not a, a, i'm said specifically that the people that i've met most christians that i meet do not show the fruits of the spirit any more than the average individual that is not a co group condemnation <laughs> that is an individual condemnation of the christians that i meet time i'm sorry you the first time you speak I heard what you said the first time. Right. You don't need to repeat yourself. Well, if you're going to like mischaracterize to... it, you're going to hear me say it again. I, if I'm not mischaracterizing you, but I should like to say— Sure you did. Minister. You acted as though Mark today is the same person Mark was when he was 17 years yeah, old, he was. and he's not. He blamed religion for what he— No, I didn't, uh, actually. No, he doesn't. I, no. I don't blame yeah, my religion call, for it, James. What I said in the past, and I think that—and and I'm going to still say it, is, is that the way Christianity was presented to me— I just don't believe those stories. Stories like Samson lost his strength from getting his hair cut and that people got, we got languages from people trying to build a really tall building to the sky and that uh, I, uh, Samson kills a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass and Balaam and his talking ass. There's a lot of ass in the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Old Testament. <laughs> and like all these stories that just sound like stories they don't sound any different than myths from other religions at some point in my growth i decided this is a bunch of hooey i've been taught a bunch of hooey now because i was given the instruction that morality is based on your belief simply your belief in god and not based on sort of your actions and the consequences to those actions i really wasn't taught that I was taught you're good if you believe in God, you're bad if you don't. So I thought that reasonably, because this is what I'm, I was taught in my uh, Christian school, my Christian church and these kind of things, that once there's no God to my mind, because I've been told a bunch of silly stories, that I therefore don't have to be good. I wasn't really instructed in the consequences of right and wrong behavior. Now, I can understand why somebody says, ah, I don't care, but... For me, that's a relevant conversation, and for me, that's what I claim happened in my life. I wouldn't tell you what happens in your life isn't so. Right. You're not disowning your own responsibility for your own actions at that age. No. I, I mean, obviously, you are responsible for them. I right. just think that I was given—I think that Christians— this is my advice, having grown up Christian, that you can do a lot for your kids by saying, hey, look— um, we believe in God, and God has created a world where co actions have consequences. Good actions have good consequences, or pro-consequences, or pro consequences, <laughs> whatever Daryl's going to correct me with here. But actions, uh, there are results for every action if you make a bad, immoral action. And we'll try to instruct you with what those are throughout your life. But if you make an immoral action, you're probably going to get a bad result, and people aren't going to like you, and you're going to get, and bad things are going to happen. Instead of, you're going to go to hell if you do mm. something bad, because the going to hell thing says, well, just if you can get away with it here on earth. And the politicians, I think, are a terrible thing to look at, right? Like these people throughout history have been able to do bad things and get they away, get with, away it. with it. Mostly, yeah. And so I think that that's really tough. It's, 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 it's difficult. P politicians make it difficult to incorporate moral conversation into our dialogue. And I think that's the reason people want to punish those after death. So, Daryl, the Silk Road could be a trial. Excuse me, the uh, Ross Ulbricht trial is a, that's kicking off tomorrow morning could be an, uh, somehow affecting the entire internet. What's the deal there, and where's yeah, it coming so, from? Yeah, uh, so there's a story from the International Business Times, and they give a bunch of background. I'm going to skip that. Mm -hmm. yep. And go down to... Because for those that don't know, the Silk Road is an underground drug marketplace. Ross Ulbricht was accused of operating that drug marketplace, and that's the trial tomorrow. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to skip down to a section that they label as defense strategy. Okay. Defense attorney Joshua Dreitel is expected to hammer away at the way the FBI was able to determine the locations of the Silk Road server. The website was only reachable via tour, which obscures a site's location and makes it possible for a site owner to operate without broadcasting location data. The FBI claimed in a recent court filing 
by the Office of U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York that it obtained the server location and thus the Internet Protocol address because a CAPTCHA page was inadvertently broadcasting details. And the CAPTCHA, that's the thing where, you know, input the letters or numbers that you see. Right. To prove they claim that that was, you know, malfunctioning and broadcast the location of the server. But security experts who looked at their claims said that that was BS. Yes. The trouble with that, that yes. explanation, according to a number of security experts, is that's just not possible. Or as Nicholas Weaver of the International Computer Science Institute and the University of California puts it, it's inconsistent with reality. <laughs> the issue became even more complicated when the FBI agent in question failed to save his documentation on how he identified mm -hmm. the server. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't really matter when it's FBI because the FBI can say something happened and that's it. When it really well, not comes a surprise, down to it. he lost the documentation. Now it's just going to be his word, right? Right, and th this is how it's always done. Death the FBI doesn't even record their conversations with witnesses right. and uh, you know people they're getting to confess. They just write stuff down. So you're constantly having to uh, believe what these people say, and that kind of hubris always leads to corruption. Sure, that's why I believe the FBI is a terrible organization because if they can't. Uh, if, if, if they can't record the conversation they have with it's people when they policy. confess, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane. The Albert case is not the first time the U.S. Justice Department has sought to put alleged cyber criminals behind bars. Yet this case, unlike other recent investigations, could have more importance because of legal the legal concept of transferred intent. I want to find out what that is here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There I go again. That number is no good. 603-435-1105. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Your calls are welcome. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. 
DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and moments remain here. Enough time for you to get on at 603-435-1105. 603-435-1105. Unusual number because our regular phone lines are down. Uh, so keep that in mind. You can also join us on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in studio, it's Ian. Daryl. And Mark. Daryl is sharing with us a story about this the uh, Ross Ulbricht case that is coming up tomorrow morning. It's going to kick off in Manhattan. Liberty activists are already down in New York City preparing what they're going to be doing for tomorrow morning's uh, outreach and sign holdings and things like that. There's a bunch of stuff happening outside and uh, a few things happening inside the courthouse. It's uh, It's going to be an exciting week. In a lot of ways, in a sort of a horrible kind of way, because obviously everyone would prefer to not have to be there, and we'd prefer that Ross Ulbricht not be in federal custody and that these charges had never been brought. And, but, you know, it That's is what, what it is. So uh, we're going to continue with your discussion here, Daryl, about what you termed transferred intent and how this concept, this legal concept, is going to be uh, become apparent, I guess, and important in this upcoming trial. Yes. We'll talk about that, but first, we've got Scott on the line in Wisconsin. Scott, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys, long time. How you doing there, Daryl and Mark? And I wanted to call you about um, an article I read earlier about the economics. Um, I see the same pattern um, taken off that happened uh, back in 2008. Uh, wife and I were driving down the road the other day, and she goes, Honey, why is uh, oil prices going down so low? Uh, well, you know what? You, the record player goes around. Look what happened back in 2008. Oil moved down, down. And uh, I saw the article that was saying that these oil rigs are shutting down. And uh, I think that with the, the – I call it the ferry market, the stock market – we're seeing it doing the jiggy wiggy right now. So I tell you what, guys, if you got, uh, I'm not talking to be a prepper, but if you got any, a warning to everybody, wake your eyes up because I think they're going to uh, tank the ferry market going on through this year. So you, when the bear's in the woods, you better re re run out of there. So I don't know I'm what that is. Is that like a stock anything. thing? Bears? I'm not right. I'm not going to predict anything, but I, I call it the ferry market, the stock market. Well, you got to go. And, you got to put uh, your money it, somewhere. Where do you think people should put their money? Well, I think you should put it in. Uh, I invested in titanium, iron, brass, copper, uh, <laughs> bullion, big guy. It sounds so, like so. But I'm just, saying, uh, I'm just saying, if you guys, if you love your family, get prepared. Because uh, you look at all the big boys like Michael Schneider, all the boys, they're seeing the same pattern. Great article is on RBN. So you're saying uh, that you it think... Because it's the same pattern that was happening in 2008. So uh, thanks for taking so my call. You think if you that... want to comment, go ahead. Yeah, you think that... Uh... Oh. Bye. Um, anyway, so he, he, what he was saying is that he believes that there's a similar pattern happening as in 2008, and so therefore prepare for economic downturn? 
I think that um, here's a here's a, here's a little piece of advice I've heard regarding uh, markets. When other people are zigging, you should zag. That okay. essentially, when something looks great and it's on its way up and doing really well, you should get out. Hmm. You should take your money and run. Now, so far, that's been really successful for me. I honestly thought with Bitcoin that it just wasn't going to work that way. But if I would have uh, zigged in at when Bitcoin was at a thousand, I'd be looking pretty good instead of uh, sitting here at uh, what is it two seventy nine or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know pretty miserable right now. It's it's lower than the acquisition cost, just like silver, which makes which means and what oil. Does mean? What which, is it, what is a lower than an actual acquisition cost? It, it costs more to produce the thing than what the price the sell price is meaning that it would cost more than 260 dollars in power to mine one bitcoin that's my understanding of the situation wow plus, plus you include the mining equipment so people are gonna not mine anymore is that the idea because I, I thought i heard a, i saw a headline about some major mining company backing out they're like not gonna mine until the price goes up or something. yeah I, i've heard that claim as well and but the miners st still can make money on transaction fees, right? They can also make well, yeah. But it, I mean, I think miners are holding uh, bitcoins should be holding bitcoins with the expectation that they're going up, but they have to pay for equipment. Mm -hmm. and that, I think that's one of the reasons you see prices going down right now is as people are still continuing to liquidate to try to pay for equipment costs that they've uh, put in. You can't you can't just hold on to your losses forever. So at some point, that's that. Well, I don't know what the hell is going to happen in the future. No. I wouldn't make any predictions about that. I'm just telling you zig when other people are zagging. Yeah. All right. So anyway, you can share your thoughts at 603-435-1105. Daryl, what is transferred intent, and why does it have anything to do with the Ross Ulbricht trial, and why does that mean anything for the rest of us? So the idea of transferred intent is if a user conducts illegal activity on a website can the website operator be charged with wrongdoing? Right. The concept has traditionally, and this is from the International Business Times, the concept has traditionally been applied to violent crimes, but has increasingly been used in the past against services like Napster or the Pirate Bay. Yep. Those sites did not actually pirate the content. That's correct. But they have been widely blocked and are the subject of police investigation because they have allowed pirating stuff to be shared through their sites. Only Because presumably they knew that and they should have done something about it because all of us are somehow arms of the police state. Right. It's ridiculous. And the claim here with the Silk Road is that instead of trading music and movies, Silk Road users were trading in much more nefarious content such as illegal drugs or counterfeit documents. What if someone, and this is the question that they pose, what if someone uses Craigslist to sell an illegal handgun? Does that make the operator of Craigslist guilty? An answer in the affirmative might have implications not only for the dark net, but also piracy operators and even top online commerce sites like Amazon and eBay. So the suggestion being that if Ross Ulbricht is found guilty of running the Silk Road, given that, you know, he was presumably aware that there were drugs being sold on his site, that therefore, by virtue of transferred intent, that that could he be— He is a guilty of selling the substances, and because judicial precedent means that, you know, every case that happens after looks to the previous mm -hmm. cases to help decide the future case, if Ross Ulbricht is found guilty of having operated the Silk Road, then it could have implications for Amazon or eBay if someone sells something that might be illegal in one location. Yeah, but but wouldn't, I mean, I see where you're coming from, and certainly the courts can do whatever they want, right? But, right. but wouldn't the argument essentially be, like with the Craigslist example, that, oh, well, Mr. Craig or whoever it was that started Craigslist. Uh, I don't think he has any control over it now. Yeah, but, yeah. But, 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 you know, Mr. Craig doesn't know what all these categories contain, right? Like there's specific rules on Craigslist. You can't be a prostitute, right? Like right. They, that's they removed they the uh, escort section. Yeah. So, uh, but but even then it was just escorts, not prostitution, right? Like right. You, you can't be a prostitute on Craigslist by Craigslist terms of service. So if you were to list something. But I hear on, there are some. I bet you there are. <laughs> If you were to list They're something, mostly on Backpage now. 
wherever. If you were to list some sort of illegal service under a company that's trying to only allow for legal services to be listed, how they would end up finding that person guilty based on the Silk Road seems like a stretch. I'm not saying they couldn't do it. It, it but does seem a like a stretch, but it would be <coughs> it, it would be one more uh, court ruling to help set the precedent yeah. that a website operator is responsible for everything that happens on his website. It's a scary precedent, but you know, at the same time, if Ross Ulbricht was in charge of the Silk Road, then he was the one who created the category that says drugs and then all the subcategories underneath that. I'm not saying it was bad what he did, but, you know, he did that. Somebody made that place for people to put those things, obviously with the intention of allowing that kind of tra those transactions to go on. So I would say that calling that similar to Craigslist is obviously, a, you know, it doesn't really follow. But I think I see what you're saying, that this is a step in that direction. Right. Just Whether like it'll be with, stretched in that in th that far right away is another question. Right. It, it's probably not going to be the very next court case yeah. to expand transferred intent. But if somebody po uh, posts a torrent on the Free Talk Live BBS, does that mean that we're responsible for that? It could. But here's the thing with torrents, because the Pirate Bay, unlike Napster, the Pirate Bay does not know the file extension of what is being sent. Okay. Where with Napster, they knew, the operators of Napster knew this is an MP3, mm -hmm. this is an MPEG, this is an MP4. With the Pirate Bay, they just know this is a torrent file yeah. and it you know connects to a torrent and the torrent software then interprets it, it is to called, MP3 or MP4. It is called Pirate Bay. <laughs> All right, well, we're out of time for tonight, but follow along over at uh, freetalklive.com, freekeen.com, and the Liberty Beat's going to be doing live coverage uh, tomorrow from the Ross Ulbricht trial, and we'll keep you in the loop as it continues on Free Talk Live. Free A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com. Serving you faster than the Fed prints money. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $200,000. 